It is a special day across our country. It's 9-11, no different here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And bringing the Nebraska Cornhuskers out of the tunnel today will be senior walk-on. His name is Tyrone Foy. He has been on the special teams. He has been a captain on the scout team for the last couple of years. Joined the program back in 2007 after six years as a Navy SEAL, which included two tours in Iraq. Tyrone Foy and the rest of the Huskers coming out of the tunnel. It's the Nebraska Corn Huskers Tunnel Walk. special scenes in all of college sports memorial stadium on a game day a sea of red here in lincoln nebraska and the weather could not be more delightful look at that high 60s low 70s today with a light wind coming out of the northwest to greet these two teams here to memorial stadium today bo pelini in his third year guiding the huskers and what a turnaround for nebraska under his guidance my goodness what a great record already and then last year of course at 10 and 4 and that shutout in the bowl game has really put him on the map now the head coach of the vandals you talk about a turnaround season they had that under rob Akey last year they went eight and five after winning only three times in the two previous years he feels like his team is on the rise yeah and they really are they're a veteran ball club both offensively and defensively really only one sophomore in the two deep that really are going to play for that football team so it's a pretty good group and i think they're going to test nebraska they didn't have a big test last week in that football game, but I think the Huskers will get tested, especially with Nate Anderley at quarterback. Gary, probably a perfect tune-up for next week at Washington. No doubt about it. Here's a chance to get your defense out there against a spread offense, an offense that is veteran in their operation. They know what to do, and so it's a chance to really refine some things. And on the offensive side of the ball for the Huskers, it's an opportunity to go ahead and get your quarterback more fully ingrained in the offense. That's Taylor Martinez, just a redshirt freshman. So it'll be interesting to see how well he continues his development process as a quarterback, especially here in Lincoln. As the crowd gets ramped up here in Lincoln today, we're almost ready for the opening kickoff. Nebraska won the coin toss, but they elected to defer to the second half. So Nebraska will kick off. And the kickoff duties belong to Adi Kanalik, who is the kickoff specialist. Had a couple of touchbacks last week in that win for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They beat Western Kentucky 49-10. Idaho coming off a 45-0 shutout of North Dakota. This one sailing into the end zone. It'll be down there. And the Vandals will start at their own 20-yard line. So Idaho comes in with a quarterback that really is no stranger to the state of Nebraska. Nate Enderley played his high school ball at North Platte. Was actually recruited by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Had an oral commitment to come here to play. And then all of a sudden, Nebraska kind of recruited him and brought in Josh Freeman. Then Kansas State got into the picture. They took Josh Freeman. They tried to get back on Enderley, but by then he had already committed to Idaho. And 
And the give is to McCarty. He goes over the right side and gains about three. Let's take a look at the rest of the starters for the Vandals. And up front, a line that needs to do a better job than they did a week ago when they allowed four sacks against North Dakota. They'll be tested here today against that strong front line of the Huskers. Princeton McCarty is a go-to guy in the backfield, but Eric Greenwood is a tall receiver. In fact, all the receivers, Gary, are very tall. Yeah, the offensive the line for Idaho really big size. I think they're going to match up well against the Nebraska defense. So. So speaking of the D let's take a look at the front four defensively for the Nebraska Cornhuskers of course led by Jared Crick who is the preseason Big 12 defensive player of the year the linebackers this is where they're tested with the losses of Compton and Fisher to injury Levante David and Eric Martin are going to have to step up today the secondary is tough in fact eight players that play in the secondary got at least one start a year ago they're led by Prince Amukamara who is one of the best in the country at corner. On a third and a long five. A little pressure coming. The pass is completed to McCarty, but he is down on the field at the 28, short of the first down. Well, an opportunity here for Enderley to get a first down here on that series. Really not anything out of the ordinary for this offense. They're trying to get it moving down the field. Good job by the Huskers of coming up and making the play on the football. And the pressure on the quarterback did not allow him to step into the throw to put it out there for his receiver to run with it. So Carl Pelini has got to be happy about a three down and out there for his defense. What do you think the defense went through this last week in practice after last week's showing? You have got to stay focused and you've got to ramp up your emotions and your, your energy level. And I think they need to be consistent throughout the ball game. They had some lapses and that was a communication aspect that uh, Brent Stover talked about in our open. Well, the Vandals didn't have enough men on the field, so they burn a timeout here. Early goings here from Memorial Stadium. Back to Lincoln in a moment. We welcome you back to Memorial Stadium. Is there any place that looks prettier on game day than Memorial Stadium in Lincoln? This is an awesome sight. You see the sea of red. They're all standing. They're all having a great time. It's warm. It's going to be fun down there for these fans. It's a great day for a football game. Bobby Cowan, the punter for the Vandals, took a timeout there because they didn't have enough men on the field. And you were saying, Gary, during that timeout, maybe they should have just taken the penalty. Yeah, sometimes, you, you know, instead of giving up that uh, the timeout, you might want to preserve that for something later in the half or whenever you might need that timeout. You know, that's just a coach's call. They took the time out and said, let's don't burn five yards. And, you know, that's just a Rob Aikens call. So Niles Paul will be back deep at his own 25 yard line, awaiting the punt of Bobby Cowan. Paul last week, he returned three punts for an average of 19.3. Wobbly punt that's angling toward the sideline. Paul will let it drop. And it will go out of bounds at the 33 yard line as he was staring up into that bright sunshine. Well, Taylor Martinez again with a strong debut, but it'll be interesting here today, Gary, now that Idaho has some film on this kid, what he does here this afternoon. Yeah, they're going to see how they'll line him up. You know, the offense really hasn't changed greatly with Sean Watson as a coordinator, but he's tried to simplify the package. That's one of the things Bo Pelini talked about doing is let's go ahead and bring this thing way down a notch and let's kind of simplify things, get better execution across the board well, those 127 rushing yards the most rushing yards by a freshman quarterback in Nebraska history from under center and the handoff goes to Roy Hallou he goes along the left side for a gain of about three so let's look at that front line for the Huskers and that's one of the things the coaches told us yesterday the front five for Nebraska as strong and as deep as they have been in years. We got a freshman though starting at left tackle so we got to take an eye, keep an eye on that. Jeremiah Searles is that starter. The receivers very good. Niles Paul Brandon Kinney are really the go to guys are going to try to get the ball a little bit more today to Mike McNeil who did not have a catch last week. Pass into the outlet. It is caught out there. And Niles Paul was able to get the first down at the 45 before Kenneth Patton could make the stop. So let's check out the Vandals defensively. And their front four is led by Aaron Lavarius. Everybody talks about his motor. Everybody, including Idaho coaches and Nebraska coaches alike. The linebackers led by JoJo Dixon in the middle. And as far as the secondary is concerned, one of the guys that's maybe one of the best in the country at safety is Shiloh Kao. He was on the All-WAC team last year. Yeah, first team All-WAC performer does a good job, always around the football. 
Hello dances over a would-be tackler, stays on his feet, hangs onto the ball, is gang tackled at the 33 as a penalty flag comes in. Our referee today is Dan Romeo. Personal foul, clipping, offense, number 74. 15-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, that negates a big play there for the offense. You want explosive plays in the run game or the passing game, and Bo Pelini not happy about penalties, and good job here by Halu getting around the edge, and then you get the clip here coming in late, so. Gary Walker had just actually jumped just missed the tackle and Halu jumped right over him there the safety coming down trying to make a play so the Huskers backed up and then they go back as they it's a spot foul 15 yard penalty from the spot of the infraction it makes it first and 12 Martinez oh boy wide open across the middle of the field was Mike McNeil he had no one behind him I, I think it's really surprised Martinez you know after the fake he looks up and down the field and he's got a receiver wide open watch right down the hash mark folks you're going to see this going to come to the middle of your screen and there's going to be a receiver right there. He just underthrew that football. I think he was surprised at how wide open he was, and he knows he missed one there. You know, that's the growth process, Dave, that a quarterback has to go through. Get in there, get comfortable, make the throws. That will become automatic as Taylor Martinez progresses throughout the season. One of the tests now is can he shake that off and come back with a strong play? Second and 13, Martinez to throw it again, airs it toward the sideline, and that one too far for Niles Paul. So back-to-back -back throws that are off target for Taylor Martinez. Yeah, two things there. A little bit wide by Martinez. I don't think Niles Paul really came out of the break very well on that route. He came up and did a little stick route and tried to turn out. Watch his break at the top of the screen there. I don't think he came out. He slipped, and that's not really all on the quarterback. Just a little on Niles Paul. So it brings up a third and 13. This defense for the Vandals was not very good at all last year, despite their overall record. They feel like they're much improved this year. Now here's a third and long situation. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> that's a pretty good run through right there. That's what you like as a linebacker. Get a chance to run through there, but a little bit, a little bit early. JoJo Dixon got a little anxious. Uh, he's a playmaker for him. Interception last week, and he's been around the football a lot. But uh, but JoJo got a little, well, got started just a little bit early. Dead ball, offside. Defense, number 34, five-yard penalty, still third down. Now, here you go, folks. Take a look at linebacker. Says, I'm going to blitz. All right. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> hey, but the good, hey, the poise on the offensive line, that's mm -hmm. what you'd like to see as an offensive quarter. Hey, don't get, let those guys influence you jump out of your stance. So it makes it third and eight. You see Mike Caputo, the center, calling out the blocking schemes. Martinez airs it out again. This time it's on target, completed. Paul stays on his feet and goes down inside the 40 to the 38. The ball came loose, but it was down by contact. Well, here's a situation you had with Taylor Martinez. You know, he has backed up third long. Then you have the penalty. You have a chance to go manageable third and eight. Now is Paul going to be out there, just kind of do a little wheel route, just sits down in the zone. No coverage there in the secondary, so I think there might be a little bit of a bust by the Idaho secondary, not down closer and tighter on him to at least contest the throw for a first down. Sean Watson was telling us about Niles Paul yesterday. He said, I love this kid because he's got a linebacker mentality. He likes like to get nasty and block and do those things that uh, really makes a great receiver. Taylor Martinez on the keeper. Goes around the end, looking for the end zone. One man to beat, and he is downed at the five-yard line by Shiloh Ko. I got one word for that, Dave. Speed. Now there is a flag out there on the field going to be inside the 10 yard line. So don't know how this is going to affect the play. Maybe uh, bring it back a little bit. But this is Taylor Martinez at his best. Over. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Now 81. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's on Ben Cotton. Bo Pelini doesn't like that call. Now those are penalties that you just don't like to give away field position give away big plays but, but back to Martinez you know it's just basically the zone read and he sees the opportunity here to take it watch him take and go around the edge and then his speed to the corner he just beats the cornerback right around the edge that's Kenneth Patton had no chance to catch him he has safety help coming over it slows him down so he doesn't get in the end zone but the penalty brings it back to the 19 yard line 15 yard penalty there backs it up to the 19 where it's first and 10 from the 19. Martinez with Rex Burkhead behind him. 
Now, excuse me, that's Halu, and Halu bounces outside and will force himself down to the 16-yard line where he is out of bounds. Well, if you're Idaho defensively at the point of attack, you've got to do this. You've got to hold up inside. I think they do pretty well. So Halu uses his ability and reads that and bounces to the outside, and then you've got to make perimeter tackles on the outside. So pretty good job there by the defense, only allowing a couple of yards. But Halu, now you've seen his elusiveness. I think he's very, very healthy this year, Dave, and he's able to make some of those moves. Only five carries last week. He was good, but he didn't get a lot of touches. Martinez to throw it again. Paul's got it. A little sidestep, but a good, sure tackle on the outside. And a tackle there by Grimes. Yeah, this offensive line here for Nebraska, they're deploying a little bit of an offensive system here. They're widening out the space. Take a look at it there on the outside. You see these tackle guard splits and the guard center split. Those are pretty wide splits here, about two and a half, three yards. Almost the old Texas Tech style of offense with Mike Leach down there. Not quite as wide, but still trying to spread out the defense here. Perhaps take advantage of the good run lanes. So a third down upcoming for the Huskers. Third down, four yards to go. Martinez trying to draw up the Vandals offside. Pressure. Pass is caught on the outside by Cotton, and he is down close to the first down. Looks like they're going to give him forward progress. That'll be just enough. Isaac Butts made the stop, but where Cotton was tackled was at the nine-yard line. Yeah, good read by Martinez. The defense brings six that time, brings pressure, so he knows he doesn't have enough enough to pick it up. He has to get the ball back quickly, and he does. Out to Cotton, the tight end, who gets a little release right there on the outside, and they do get the first down, so a good throw and catch there inside the in the red area. First and goal then at the eight yard line. Huskers on their opening drive. Martinez keeps it again, trying to get the corner. Wow, great play by Aaron Grimes. Wow, that's what you want to do as a cornerback, you know. But I tell you, the athleticism of Martinez, he almost jumped over Grimes on this as he takes the, the zone read, reads it down here, not going to give it inside, takes it around. Look at the pressure here by the defense. He comes in, tries to hurdle him, but doesn't do it. Grimes, it's a nice heady play from the outside, making a play here in the red area. Reads run and comes up, beats the block inside, and does a nice tackle in the backfield. That was a great read by Grimes. Paul was trying to get there to block him, and he ran right through that block and made a good tackle on Taylor Martinez. A loss of about three on the play. There's a man down on the field for the Vandals. Try to get a number for you. It looks like there is a player down on the field. It is Gary Walker, number three. And as he's helped off the field, looks like he's getting stronger with each step. He's got his bell rung down there. So it's been an opening drive, Gary, that's kind of stopped and started a yeah, few it has. times. A couple of times stopped and started, but I think the Huskers have really continued to pick it up. So now you're outside the 10-yard line here, and you were inside that about the seven-yard line, kind of back and forth. The pitch to the outside. Halu spinning inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line, where he stopped by Homer Manga. Watch this student body right. Yeah, it is. You get the offensive line, watch the guard tackle pull here, trying to get some space there. And Halu turns up inside. If he just kept it around with the guard log, the, I mean log as he turned the defender in, if he just stayed to his outside edge with the right guard pulling around on Rick Henry, he would have been able to get a little more yardage, I think. So some of that early season kind of coaching and teaching as far as where your run lanes are, what you're looking for your linemen to do, those are things that everyone is trying to work on here in these first games of the season. Third and goal from the seven. Martinez dropped the snap, now throws it into the corner of the end zone, and out of bounds is the intended receiver. Yeah, that's just a timing route. Get the chance to throw the ball up there to Niles Paul and see if he can come down with it. But, uh, you know, Taylor Martinez, who dropped the football, just tosses it up, and this is just a timing route, as I said, a little bit too far. But I think Paul there does a good job at least getting his hand on here. Great camera work there, guys, looking at it coming right in your kitchen. So Nebraska gets it down inside the 10 yard line but cannot convert with a touchdown. They settle for the 24 yard field goal. And now the transition back to the defense. So on Nebraska's opening drive, 
it was one of those drives where you say OK there were a lot of good things that happened but a penalty knocked him back a, a holding call they had some other things that happened in there that you say eh, it wasn't exactly an A plus effort they had a couple of explosive plays there one by the quarterback run the football Taylor Martinez but a penalty bringing that back a little bit so in and out of the inside the 10 yard line a couple of times and bringing it back out sell for the field goal with Mr. Mr. Automatic Henry. Not a bad opening drive here but I'm sure that uh, every coach would like a, a touchdown if you get that opportunity to get in the red zone that close. Canalic to kick off again. His first kick went into the end zone for a touchback. This one will go into the end zone again and again down by Justin Beltong and they'll start at the 20 yard line for the Vandals offensively they went three and out on their first possession and as they huddle with their offensive coordinator Steve Axman Mike. we'll see if Enderley can kind of get loose a little bit all three plays for the Vandals went to Princeton McCarty and I talked about this Idaho bunch being a real veteran bunch all juniors and seniors on their two deep on their offensive roster so that shows you that they've got a lot of experience a lot of guys with game experience so they've been able to grow around this quarterback Nathan Enderley. And they take another timeout. So the Vandals have already used two of their three allotted timeouts here in the first half. So the Vandals have to burn another timeout here, Gary. That's two now. And, and that really shouldn't happen when you're coming out on offense with the first play. And I go bragging on about being a veteran ball club. And those are just mistakes that you make, you know, with personnel groupings in a situation of what you're doing out there. And a little bit of coach, a little bit of player not being ready to go there. Those are things that could hurt you long term, but just early in the ball game, so they won't have those use of opportunities for with those timeouts. Let's get you to Brent Stover. Well, guys, a great story with this Idaho team over the last couple of years. They've had the top player from the week before, not always the player of the week, but a guy that really embodies what they want for the Vandal program. They haven't bring the axe out to represent their team and their mascot. This week, though, they brought out the flag, a really nice gesture here on 9-11, and uh, you know, really close to the head coach Rob Akey's heart as he spent uh, last summer the summer of 2009 over in Afghanistan for a couple of weeks he and four other college coaches from around the country went over visited said when he came back he was so impacted by the teamwork of those guys he's around teams and great athletes all the time but he just really appreciated the attitude and the team effort from some of the young men over there guys thanks a lot Brent he said we went up to Afghanistan, five yeah. coaches, to inspire the troops. And he goes, instead, they inspired us. Yeah, I've talked to him and several other those coaches that went on that trip, David Bailiff among them, down from, from Rice University. And you know, that group of guys that went over there, they kind of had their, their their schedule change, and they went into some different situations that they weren't prepared for. But they came back, as you said, more enriched from going over there than being able to tell stories on their own. So I think it uh, really was kind of inspiring for me. It's an interesting way that Coach Akey allowed that flag to be brought out, which had been flown and used in Afghanistan over several several missions. So here on 9-11, a chance for us to thank again our servicemen and women all over the world that protect our freedom, along with the firefighters, as the pass completed here to Veltung, perfectly thrown by Enderly, the firefighters, the policemen, all the service people that do such a great job for us. We can't thank you enough. Alfonso Dennard with the stop there. Dennard is getting a lot of attention now because a lot of teams, quite frankly, throw away from Prince Amukamara. But, you know, the coaches, Carl Fellini was telling us yesterday that he's okay with that because Dennard has really stepped in and he is outstanding as a cover guy. Yeah, he's a good guy to have, especially if they're going to go away from Akamara. First and ten. Again, the throw with contact. great coverage. A little bit of contact there. Amukamara was there on the coverage. Pass intended for Greenwood. Yeah, this kind of a flat route here coming from the outside in. And Amukamara down here is going to come down inside with him. to get on his back shoulder. And as he get there before the ball's there, that's probably a, a good non-call. Asking, too, Carl Polini about the size of the receivers for the Vandals. Greenwood at 6'7". Armani Johnson at 6'4". Maurice Shaw at 6'3". They're a tall group. But he said, hey, our can get up there with him. And Abu Kamara is 6 1 himself. And he said, Dennard, he has a vertical leap of 46 inches. Tackle there made by Jared Crick, who's the number one ranked defensive lineman in the country. And yeah, we talked about uh, Nathan Enderley here. And, you know, he, he's tall. He's 6 5. He's a big guy, 233. He's got NFL tools 
That's what the story is on him. He's got the ability to perhaps play on Sunday. So this season is huge for him, and he wants to show well against a, a quality team and a quality defense here against Nebraska. Three receivers up top. Greenwood on the low portion of your screen on third and six. There he goes, the first sack of the day. Coming up, Levante David from his linebacker spot on the blitz. Well, a little extra pressure there from the right side uh, on the offensive side. Here's David going to come right through to watch number four get there before Enderley can do anything with it. He's got one from the back side. I think that's Crick also. Gonna, might get a half sec on this as well. So Jared Crick and, and Levante David combining there for the sack on Nathan Enderley. They were asking Jared Crick before the game, do you go a little bit lighter on Enderley because he's from North Platte? He said, no mercy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the punter, Bobby Collin on. Left footed kick. Paul will let this one bounce as well, and it takes a good bounce for Idaho. Stop it at the 27 yard line. That's where the Huskers will begin their offensive attack. Now, Bo Pellini talking earlier this year about what he thinks the Huskers will catch some teams by surprise with this year. Number one, I think people are going to be surprised at uh, about our defensive line, even though we lost big suit. I would say the other thing is I think people will be surprised at the productivity we get out of our quarterback position. You know, I think everybody wanted to be so focused on who the who the quarterback's going to be that they they think it's a question mark. I think it's I think the competition is going to make us better and it's going to make us uh, make the, the position more. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mike McNeil with a grab there, his first of the year. Early results, though, on Coach Bellini's talk there is basically is that the quarter, quarterback position going to get production. You certainly had that last week with Taylor Martinez, and as he continues that today with a pretty good performance here so far. Pass a little bit behind McNeil. So Taylor Martinez, and as I love what he said, though. He said, everybody thinks there's a question mark at quarterback. I think all those questions have pretty well been answered. Yeah, you know, the way they handled the situation with the three quarterbacks and the competition, it did make each player better. And, and I think that the players really understood for what the process they went through. It was fair, good competition. And the guy that really think needs to win did. Perfect pitch out to Burkhead. Martinez could not have played that one any better. That was precision, Dave. Exactly right. You come down here on the zone read, and this is just an option part of the game as well. You come back and you have the pitch side. The zone read underneath. Take a look. Then you've got pressure here, and they pitches that on the backside of Burkhead. Good block there on the outside, and it gets extra yardage there. You're going to be a good explosive run team. You've got to have wide receivers that will block for you, and that's the case here for the Huskers on this one. Good block in that field. There's Niles Paul getting in the way, and excellent job there. But the pitch, most important there from Nathan, from. Uh, Taylor Martinez was spot on. Good block on the outside by McNeil. Get an extra five yards. Martinez straight drop. Quick hitter. A gain of about three on the play. And that one goes to Niles Paul. Gary Walker was right there. Remember Walker came off injured, yes. but he's back in the game. Good to see him back there. You think I'm, I'm kind of noticing here about uh, Taylor Martinez, just how calm he is and how collected. And you know he's back there. He's running this show, the orchestra of this whole offense here, and in front of 86,000 people. You think a young freshman would be kind of in awe here? He says he talked about it last week. He says you know it's just football to me, and just he's happy to be out there playing and competing. Six of nine so far for Martinez. And the give here is to Burkett. He's got a lane. Burkett stays on his feet. Still on his feet. It took four different vandals to bring him down. Isaac Butts finally does, but not until he reaches the 12. No, maybe he doesn't have the burst of speed that you really would like to have to get away from the defenders, but he has the ability to break tackles, and that's what the most important thing with Burkett is on this run here as he brings it around from the backside. He's going to come around and run inside here. The defense good block on the outside right there tying up the defender and he breaks one or two tackles to get extra yardage here. Good job by Burkhead getting the ball inside the 10 15 yard line. They'll mark it at the 12 first down for Nebraska an impressive looking drive. Burkhead in on this series Martinez back to throw throws it to Burkhead. He tries to get outside and again eludes a couple of tacklers and is forced out at the seven yard line by Kenneth Patton and Robert C of EE. I think that Sean Watson's calling a pretty good ball game the offensive coordinator for Nebraska and he's keeping the Idaho defense off balance. What I mean by that is 
run pass, run pass, mixing it up and calling a good game and allowing Taylor Martinez to flourish in this system, not asking him to throw the ball hugely down the field or make big plays, because they can make explosive plays in a run game. They've shown that last week and also today. Second down after a gain of five, second and five for the Huskers. Burkett again, he's carried the load on this drive. This time, though, stopped right at the line by Manga. A good job by Manga coming back there in the backfield. He's the Sam linebacker for the defense, and Manga gets back there and makes a negative. Play. So, chasing this down, you go overload here. Watch from the backside. It's, uh, you see the linebacker come through that gap there. Huskers were overloaded to this near sideline, and there was a little gap there. Manga exploited it. He made five tackles a week ago, Manga, and a nice play there. So, no gain. And it's third and five. Yeah, last time down here, Nebraska had to settle for a field goal. I'm sure they have their focus right now. Let's get the ball in the end zone. They can get a first down at the two. Martinez, pressure coming. He did not see the pressure. The ball is on the ground, fumbled by Martinez. He never saw the pressure coming. See a VE with a big tackle, and the Vandals recover the ball. Huge play here by the Vandals defense. Backside pressure. You take a look at Taylor Martinez, watch his body, hold it right there if you can't, because you can't see the backside pressure right there that's going to get him. His head is firmly looking down the field to his right, does not even feel the pressure. Need to get rid of that football a lot quicker. He's going to have to account for all those rushers. That's a maturation process for a young quarterback, but a big play for the Vandals defense gets the ball back to their offense. You talked about it earlier, Gary, about Jeremiah Searles, the left tackle, a freshman, and he got burned that time by C of E.E. So the Vandals come back on offense. Last week, the Husker fans were concerned about their defense, and right now, after a stall drive on their first drive and then a fumble here, a little concerned about the offense. In and out of the hands for DeJohn Gomes. Boy, he almost had a pick and should have had a pick. Yeah, he should have had a pick. But look, protection here for Nate Enderley to throw the football. Not anybody in his face. He's able to step in and throw this football. It's plenty of time. But you're going to see the right in the middle of the field here. Gomes should have this pick. Wow. Right there should pull it down, but doesn't. Gomes, a former running back, moved to defense when he went to junior college. Now the defensive line looking back at the linebackers for calls once again. Quick drop. Pass on the outlet. It is incomplete. Pass intended for the tight end Daniel Hardy and he dropped it so it's third and ten. Yeah, they're just making mistakes here offensively not able to convert and get these catches. These are plays that you need to help have and Enderley's doing his job taking what the defense is going to allow but you got to make those grabs. Carl Pelini just trying to dial in the right defense. You know they're playing a 4-2-5 defense back here which is kind of what they call their peso defense and putting some speed on the field. You know, we talked about earlier, they're missing a couple of linebackers with injuries in, in fall camp, but so they're having to go shorthanded. But I think this is how they're really going to settle in and play a majority of the season anyway with a lot of the spread offenses they'll see this season. 0 for 2 of the Vandals on third down. Wobbly pass what into catch. coverage, and a tremendous catch by Hardy. Wow. Well, this is a throw by Nate Enderley that is off the charts, folks. This is where he's going to be able to give his receiver a chance to come down with the football, and he's going to be the only one to come down. This is a big tight end, Daniel, 245 pounds. He comes down. It's a one-handed grab. Pull the left. Three defenders all around him. This is a big-time catch, folks. Good job by Daniel Hardy. That's a huge play for the Vandals. It's one of the things that Carl Pelini told us yesterday. He said, this kid will throw into coverage. Good coverage that time on the outside by Levante David, the linebacker. You know, that's one of the things that you look for in a quarterback is accuracy. And when you're able to stand back there under pressure, you know you're going to have a, a very good defense with speed that can contest the throw. You've got to have accuracy. You put the ball on your receiver so that they're able to make those grabs. And Hardy comes down with a huge one there. But I see what everyone is talking about in Nate Endley. And he has the ability to throw that football. He's a smart quarterback. And I think so far the offensive line for the Vandals They've done a pretty decent job of keeping the pressure off of it. Enderley, 7 for 10 through the air so far. Right at midfield, 2nd and 10. And the handoff goes to the tailback, Deontay Jackson. He goes right into the middle of the Cornhusker defense and gains one or two. This gets a little bit old, though, for Enderley as far as having to continue to make, make throw after throw. It's going to be third and long here. Good job by the... Husker defense are taking away the cutbacks and you know as a defense you want to take away angles take away those cutbacks and 
and don't get separation. It's really important that the linebackers step up into the gaps and not create that, not allow vertical separation, which is what those cutback lanes are all generated from. Look at the confusion on the Nebraska defense. They're all looking to the sideline like, what play are we calling? Eric Martin was coming off the field late. Pressure coming on Enderley. He dances out of the pocket and is still sacked. Wow, what a hit by Crick. Well, Nate Enderley wanted something to happen in the secondary that he did not get. A receiver to come free and, and come his way. He actually rolls back to his left side here, folks, and watch number 94 right there. Keep an eye on him and his pressure that he does because Crick is going to be the one who actually plants Enderley into the turf here. Just continue the quarterback. You never know what's going to happen and go ahead and make the play. That's good speed. Watch the acceleration from the big guy in the last two steps. Boom. Ooh. Jared Crick with a huge sack there. That's the second sack of the day for the black shirts. And the first quarter comes to a close. So uh, a score at the end of the first quarter that might surprise some around the nation on this 9-11 day as we honor our troops and our firefighters and our policemen. We watch Nebraska take the lead into the second quarter, three to nothing. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Gorgeous day for football. We start the second quarter and the Huskers lead the Vandals 3-0. Rents over alongside Carlos Polk, the former linebacker at Nebraska, late 90s, eight years in the NFL. You just retired, what, last year was 08, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, body took enough big pounding. How much do you miss the game, especially on a day like today? Oh, uh, now today, uh, that, this makes me miss it. This atmosphere, you know, this sea of red, I, I miss this. Tell us about your coaching gig now with the Chargers. Uh, yeah, I'm helping out with the uh, Chargers right now, working with the special teams and the linebackers. Uh, it's starting to get my coaching career started. What do you think of Bo's defense, speaking of? Uh... I'm, like, I, I'm, lo I'm loving it right now. I mean, he's bringing back that black shirt pride that, you know, I, I, I still hoot and holler about in the locker room. How excited are you to see Ndamukong Sue in his NFL debut tomorrow? Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, I'm sure he's going to. You know, go nuts like he always does. So, you know, I can't wait to see that. After this game here today, you head to Kansas City. Arrowhead Monday night, Chargers Chiefs. What do you think of the Bolts this year coming back? Oh, we're, we're, gonna, we're trying to get a ring now. We, you know, we keep falling up a little short, and this year, I hope it is our year. All right. Carlos, we appreciate the time. Oh, thank you. Thank Former you. Husker linebacker in the late 90s. Carlos Polk here on the sideline as we start the second and head back up to you guys. Thanks a lot, Brian. But good to see Carlos again. Looks good, doesn't he? Yeah, good former linebacker. I like mm -hmm. that. You know, eight years in the league. That's pretty good stuff and still yeah. still going with, uh, with the coaching stuff. Well, you were eight or nine. I played nine years nine, in the league. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, had a had a good run there and uh, good to see that he had that. And he's still in, still enjoying the game as well. Absolutely. Well, Bobby Cowan with the punt now for the Vandals after that big sack by Crick. And we're talking in the timeout about how impressive that was as he closed ground. Paul here has the ball go off of his chest and then out of bounds fortunately for the Huskers but it's all the way back at the 12 yard line. Yeah good directional punt that time by Idaho not allowing Paul to get that ball and grab it so first couple of punts they really haven't had to do anything but take a look at Nebraska in their first couple of possessions here are the play totals and 14 plays the first one and got the field goal and then you have the sack fumble there over seven plays so a couple of a couple of drives and not really the execution and the points that you like to have off of those you know Sean Watson hey we like the two touchdowns on those two drives because they're moving the ball consistently. Now Trey Robinson has now checked in at tailback for the Huskers behind Taylor Martinez. Martinez keeps it himself and is stood up at the 15 yard line. Good D again by these Vandals. Step up in the hole and pop the pop the quarterback there and not a bad job there stepping up there and that's Siave. Watch them go on there bingo right there in the top. And just got to fill up those holes in those lanes. You know, as a quarterback read here, this is what this offense is kind of predicated around with, with Taylor Martinez, allowed him to read. And there's Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, dialing things in here, trying to get some plays that he's going to be comfortable with, that he can grow within. They're going to use multiple personnel, multiple situations and, and, and groupings to kind of change up the looks that the defense is going to see. Martinez again with a really nice move in the backfield to elude a tackle. Probably should have been a sack by Sadaraka. But K.O. finally comes up to make the stop. 
Dan Sadaraka is one of their captains, one of their better defensive players watching the middle of the field. If he gets up the field, he should make this tackle. But I've talked about Taylor Martinez and how elusive he is. I think his wiry frame really gives him that ability. You don't see a lot of square hits on this young man, at least not early in this, in his, in this season. So I think that he has that ability to get away from hits and make some plays with his feet and break tackles. Big third down play coming up here, third and two. So far, the Huskers are two of four on third down today. Quick drop, Martinez with the toss to the outside, and he's able to find his tight end and Kale with the stop, but they'll move the chains. Actually, the pass completed to Paul. And yeah, Niles Paul does a good job there, and coming into this ball game at 69 career receptions, just one of the guys who continues to move up the charts. He's been a good Husker, been a, had a great career, and just needs 50 yards in total offense and uh, total receiving yards to pop into the top 10 of all-time receivers at Nebraska. So, probably gonna approach that if not not past that today he's close already he's at 22 yards so he's about halfway there first and 10 for the Huskers they moved the chains up to the 25 yard line Martinez looked off a couple of receivers and got came back to Mike McNeil that was a good progression by Taylor Martinez they get the ball up to the 33 yeah, and Mike McNeil's a story played some tight end here with his career early part of his career he's moving up the charts also 61 career correct receptions has to move back to the wide receiver position as a big frame and good opportunity for him to get the ball with more on Mike McNeil let's go down to Brent Stover well Gary alluded to it he's playing that adjuster position now and Sean Watson offensive coordinator says there's a hundred million things we can do with him now line him up anywhere think Dallas Clark for yeah. the Indianapolis Colts. He shed 15 pounds, added some speed, and pretty good combo and good blocking on the outside. How about that for Martinez? Slide of hand, and there he goes! Taylor Martinez to the end zone! Touchdown, Nebraska! Well, folks, you're going to see a little misdirection here. And that's Taylor Martinez and El Matador. He's, you see him? Now you don't. I tell you, you put it in the ball, right this fullback, pull it out. It's kind of like a bull going through. You get him out of the way and you run around him. That's El Matador. Taylor Martinez, I tell you, a great job out there being deceptive with the football. Ole. Ole, that's right. You got an ole <laughs> for El Matador. So now Henry for the point after. Only missed one in his entire career. He's eight for eight this year so far. And just like that, the quick strike offense of Taylor Martinez. They had three receivers stacked to the right, a little decoy, and Martinez goes 67 yards for the touchdown. Nebraska now leads 10 to nothing. All right, write it down, folks. Gary Reasons with the nickname of El Matador here on 9-11. And what a quick strike for Taylor Martinez, 67 yards. Well, now you see it, now you don't. That's what uh, Taylor Martinez does here. 67 yards, the longest ever rush by a Nebraska freshman quarterback right there from scrimmage. And there's a good job of deceptive play right there in the middle and gets around the edge. And, guys, he's got speed. He's in the 4-3 category, so he's got that ability to break through any defense. You know, he's, he's so elusive, as you pointed out before, Gary. Also, that burst of speed and then the long stride downfield. You know, there's a lot of guys takes a little while to get going. Not this guy. He's one, two steps and gone, you know. So that's what you have to deal with when you have an explosive quarterback, an explosive player. Defenses really have to find a way to stay in front of him because if you don't, he's got enough ability to break tackles and also continue that run down the field. Kanalik with the kickoff here. By the way, a little footnote is Kanalik sends it toward the end zone and taking it at the one is Bailey tripped up excuse me that's not Bailey that's McCarty and he is shy of the 15 yard line a little footnote for Alex Henry though that point after gives him 300 points in his career look at this tackle that's a good job getting down the field to get down there with speed get behind the the wedge there the wall and make a play there inside the 15 yard line so that's good coverage teams Matthew May with a great stop on special teams backs the Vandals up at their own 13 yard line you, know, you got to really talk about the Nebraska defense they've done a nice job here of slowing this offense down from Idaho and I think that uh, Nate Enderley's got to find a way to distribute the ball around if you do 11 different receivers last week have not seen a lot of that today the give is to McCarty he finds a little bit of a hole it's closed quickly by 
to Nars at the 20 yard line. You know, I talked about stepping up in the hole for a linebacker. This is an opportunity for a linebacker to step up into the hole and he doesn't do so. And that's what allows the cutback. Watch his cutback right there by the tailback. If the linebacker was there, there would not be that hole. So there's a hit on the secondary from Tanaris. Gomes was the first one there, and then Tanaris finished him off. But a gain of seven, second and three. Quick drop and a hitter to the outside to Shaw and he's able to move the chains as he gets the ball up to the 30 yard line. Now he was covered wasn't he Dave. Yeah. That's what I was talking about about and being able to throw the football and put it on the receiver put it on the guy is actually like throwing it right to him right on his like Velcro there. And that's exactly what he does. Pretty good job there by Prince in coverage in the secondary, but just a great throw by Enderley, only where his receiver can catch it. They love his composure, and you look at Enderley's numbers on the day. He has done a, a great job throwing into traffic at times, but he is so accurate. His coach, Coach Aiki, told us earlier, he said, I was a little concerned about him coming back home and playing at Memorial Stadium, being from North Platte and all. So I had a quick conversation with him about that, and he said, Coach, please. <laughs> He's a senior. He's a guy that knows how to look. He knows that everybody who's on the team, not only just in the huddle, but on the team, look to him for leadership. And Coach Aiki and he have grown together in, the, in this system. They've come in together. They've gone through the bad times. That's freshman, sophomore year for, for Nate Enderley. But the junior season was a breakout year. They're looking to have a superlative year this year. They're in the WAC conference, so they got their work cut out for them. A little bit of a hole there as Jackson slips through and gets to midfield. That's a first down for the Vandals. You know, talked about eight Enderley a little bit and you know last season he had a pretty good year and one of the things I want to make a make a mention of is Kellen Moore from Boise State who had a great year. Well Nate Enderley had more yards and was more total offense yardage per game than Kellen Moore. So that's the kind Ooh. of quarterback that we're talking about here. The guy who can make explosive plays for that offense. We're talking about more for the Heisman this year. So that's a really elite company. Another quick drop. The coverage by Gomes, but again, the pass right on target to Elmo. Well, you take a look at what these guys have done and talk about Kellen Moore and Nate Enderley. Here's the numbers between them. You see the numbers there, total yards there, the quarterback range. Pretty good stuff there. Kellen Moore obviously had the great season last, you know, his career there at Boise State, but that's exactly 62% is pretty good. 64% is even better, which is what Kellen Moore is clicking at now for. State. For Enderley, that quarterback rating of 157.28 movement on the left side of the line here as Matt Cleveland moved early. But that quarterback rating offense number 70 was fifth best in the country last year. You know, he's a smart quarterback, and what I mean by that is he's going to keep you in good situations. You know, the couple of sacks he's had today, he's just ate the football. You know, he didn't have a chance to really get rid of the ball. So instead of making a poor throw, throw it up in the air, doesn't give those defensive in the secondary a chance to come down with cheap interceptions. To give here to McCarty, trying to bust outside in a foot race now. Tanars was chasing him down. Dennard was there, and a flag comes in. Not sure if we're going to call a tackle up around the head here. Maybe a personal foul, face mask, defense number three, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. And that penalty against Ricky Tenars. Now make the tackle around the edge there. You take a look at it, and Tenars, the safety coming down. He's going to get his hand, his right hand up on the face mask. That's yep. definitely a good call, folks. You know, Absolutely. Fans are not happy about it, but that's definitely a, a good call there from the official. And Three penalties against the Huskers today for five yards in penalties. You know, we have the ability to slow it down. It's really fast out there as that happens. Enderly backpedaling as he throws. Passes in and out of the hands of Davis. Preston Davis, by the way, what a story for him. He tore his ACL in spring practice. He vowed to the team he would be back, and here he is back playing. Yeah, just five months. I mean, I tell you, that's a, it's an impressive number there to come back after ACL surgery and, and be back and ready to go, and that's good to see him out there. And He can make some plays. They play him in the slot position, which is the inside receiver, so Preston Davis getting back in action. Second down and 10 at the 32. Penalty flag comes in, they'll stop the play. And the right tackle jump there. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 67. Five yard penalty, still second down. It's Tyrone Nabokov. 
So that's the second illegal procedure call on this drive for the Vandals. You know, it's, it's kind of in the norm in the NFL to call the numbers out. A little bit new to start hearing it in the college game. Yeah. The, the players being named here. It's usually offense, ball start. You don't normally always get the, the numbers called out, but we're getting some little extra today. So it's second and 15. Enderley with the throw to the outside. It's battered up in the air. F***ed off by P.J. Smith. Smith has wrestled out of bounds, but it's a turnover. The Huskers get it. P.J. Smith. Well, the coverage was there by Amukamara. Does a good job of coming on it and deflecting that football, and it comes up with P.J. Smith. Hey, he's just waiting on it there. He knows he's got a foul ball, and it's like, hey, I'm there for the Cardinals game. Let me get a ball. <laughs> Goes down to him. Nice grab. Take a look here on the left side. Here's Smith right there, going to come up. See the football in the air, folks? And Smith just jumps up for it. Good job by Amukamara, knocking the ball in the air. And good secondary play. When you look at these black shirts today, an interception there. They've had a couple of sacks today. And so certainly the message that Bo Pelini was trying to deliver to his defense was well heard. So we have a change at quarterback as Cody Green has come in now. Sean Watson told us yesterday that you would see Green today, and here he is. And the give is to Hello. Down the sideline he goes. Hello dances into the end zone. 58 yards. Well, if Husker fans had any question about Roy Hallou and his health and his speed, uh-uh, don't worry about it, folks. This one, he takes to the house, got a good seam on the outside, just outruns the defense. You're not going to catch that young man in the open field. Great job of blocking on the left side of the Husker line. Allows Hallou to come down for a huge run for his football team. Now Henry going for his 301st career point. The all-time leader is Chris Brown, who had 388 points. And Stroh Automatic does it again. How about that in back-to-back -back plays? The 67-yard touchdown run by Martinez, followed by this one of over 50 yards by Halu. Good stuff. <laughs> one two punch for the Huskers to make it 17 to nothing. Another touchdown, 17 to nothing in favor of Idaho. A quick drive, wouldn't you say? One play, 58 yards. It took him eight seconds to reach the end zone. How did he do it, Gary? Well, that's a pretty good job. Underneath 60 yards there, good job because you got the blocking here. The offense does a good job. If you'll hold it right about right there, you're going to see a block here and a block here. Harder comes out and gets his block. Receiver comes down and then Hulu right through the gap. That's a hat on a hat, folks. That's what you call coaching, and that's what you want to do. Get your offensive players getting for all the accounted players on defense. And then allow your speedster to outrun that pursuit. Tremendous stuff, too. And then that stiff arm on Manga by Halu allowed him to get all the way into the end zone. I mean, he really tight roped all the way down the sideline. Yeah, he really has. And this offense really has shown you that they've got the ability to make explosive plays in the run game. Kind of looks like old times here for Nebraska. <laughs> 222 yards rushing wow. so far today by Nebraska. Last week they had 289, the most rushing yards they had had since 2008. The kickoff here by Kanalik goes through the end zone for a touchback, his third touchback of the day. Well, they got a great one-two punch kickoff with him, and then you've got Henry, Mr. Automatic, on the field goal department. They got the kicking game covered. That's good stuff, Kanalik. So three out of four for Kanalik, and the other one was even better because they kicked it to the goal line and they stopped him at the 13. Yeah, that's a great play by the coverage team. So. I think uh, Coach Pelini is going to give the kickoff team right now a plus so far in this ball game. Well, let's see what Enderley can do now. They put some pressure on him through the interception on his last pass, and now in a 17 to nothing hole, the Vandals starting at their own 20 yard line. Hardy and Elmo come over to the top side of your screen. Now Elmo back in motion again. Play action pass. And a tuck and run, Anderley, and will get out of bounds at the 25. Well, that's the old bootleg play, and the tight end's supposed to drag across, but he was kind of lagging across. I'm really surprised that he wasn't making his way over there to be the primary receiver for Brindley on that. He kind of got washed up in the traffic back there, and really looks a bit surprised he didn't continue that route for him, but Anderley does what he's supposed to, and makes some positive yards, gets five yards. Look at the size of him in the huddle, folks. Well, he's a big quarterback. He's 6'5". He's as big as the lineman. 6'5", 233 pounds. 
Gain of five there, second and five. McCarty with it. And he is gang tackled at the 28 yard line. Prince Amuka Mera was one of the guys there to stop him. So third and short here, probably going to bring in a little different personnel group, maybe go a jumbo package, I think, for Idaho offensively. And they're going to go a little scat package here. They got, looks like to bring more receivers in third and short. Prince, by the way, a sister, her name? Yeah, Princess. Princess. Yeah, interesting. You heard that yeah. yesterday. That's pretty, pretty cool. The Vandals like to be at 70% on third down. That's a lofty goal. They're one for four today. And they'll get the first down here. Levante David on the stop. And a gain of a couple to move the chains up to the 32. Good job by Idaho offense. When takes, if you stop it right there, you're going to count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And you got linebacker number five. Well, they've got him outnumbered, so he's just going to get a lane here and get through there. Good job there. Just mismatching on the defense. They're aligning the corners out too far. They can't come in and make that tackle. Good job of execution there on the offense for the first down. Four tackles today for Levante David. He had 13 a week ago. On the end around. It was Cama Bailey coming on the end around. And Gomes, really good. Look at him cover ground. Well, Gomes, we've seen him come up and make plays here for the defense, and he's able to do so. Watch right here and shoo. You're going to see him track, 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 track. Hello, darling. That was one of the things that Carl Pellini was looking for from his defense today. He said, I just want us to be aggressive. I want us to be strong to the ball. That was a good play there by Gomes. A gain of four, second and six. Enderley, a little bit of time. The pocket starting to collapse, and another pickoff. And all the way to the house goes Gomes. Talk about closing to the ball. Wow. Well, I think he was listening to us a little bit there about being around the football, and he certainly was that time. Hey, if you're going to get a ball in your midst, go ahead and make that catch, and that's what he does. Pulls it down. It's a big score for the defense, and that's a huge play for Carl Pelini. He's going to say, hey, this is great defense here. Good job. Watch Gomes on the left side. He's just going to be right there inside the tight end. He's trying to fit it in there, and that's one of the plays that I think that uh, Nathan Enderley says, I'm trying to stick the ball in there. The last two throws that were intercepted, throwing it on the body of the receivers. Well, it's got good tight coverage here by the Nebraska defensively, and Gomes comes away with a nice interception. So how about the last three touchdowns? The 67-yard touchdown run by Martinez. The point after here good by Henry. A 58-yard touchdown run by Halu, and then a 40-yard interception and return for a touchdown by Gomes. Uh, huge plays defensively, offensively. That's what you like to have, and it's uh, just a great showing here by the Huskers defense. With the pressure kind of got to Enderley there, and Gomes does a good job of jumping underneath the route, picking this ball off, and he did not set his feet, thrust step into that football, for that throw rather. Two interceptions today by the Black Shirts, plus a couple of quarterback sacks, putting a lot more pressure on Nate Enderley and Idaho. So we've already talked about Taylor Martinez and his impact as a redshirt freshman. Let's go back and compare them. Well, it's a tough comparison, I know, anybody that compares to Eric Crouch. Well, Eric Crouch, one of the best quarterbacks and running quarterbacks here ever Nebraska has ever had, shows his ability to run that zone read and run it well and run away from the defense, most importantly. Huge plays over his career. And you know what, folks? You've got another one here in Lincoln right now, and Taylor Martinez can do similar things with his feet. Number seven, down to number three, but number three has got a little bit more juice, I think, than Eric Crouch had as far as he was able to put that gas pedal down to run, and Martinez, huge runs today, and just a great outing once again for the Huskers. What did you just say? I mean, seriously, that's a huge comment to say a little bit more gas. Yeah, he does have a little more gas. He's faster Ooh. than Eric Crouch. Wow. That's saying a mouthful there. Martinez right now getting a breather. It looks like they're going to stay with Cody Green for a while. And uh, with a little more on Taylor Martinez, let's go down to Brent Stover. Well, you guys were talking about the burst of speed for the freshman quarterback. Now, this week I talked to his high school athletic director as well as his head coach, Matt Lowe, at Centennial High School in Corona, California. The AD, Bill Gunn, who, by the way, is a lifelong Nebraska fan, said, you know what, Taylor looked like the Taylor we saw last year, talking about last week, just a lot bigger, and he got to top speed a lot quicker as far as his head coach. He said, you know, it was the same Taylor magic we always saw in high school when all heck was breaking loose. The situation where we absolutely had to have a key or a big play, he always found a way to get it done, guys. He 
didn't start playing quarterback till his junior year in high school and that's when all of a sudden Martinez took off. When you see him on the sideline just warming up just keeping his head in the game. It's kind of like a practice to him. It seems like right now and you see a vandal down on the field on the coverage there. It looks like it's Marcel Posey a backup wide receiver for the Vandals. Vandals bring it up to the 22 yard line. So you look at the way Nebraska has played here so far today Gary and you know it's been so impressive you talk about quick strikes and it's and it's really impressive how how good they're doing on these quick strikes and you know it seems to be now after a little bit of a sputter start for the Huskers now they're really cooking on all cylinders no doubt about it the offense is making huge plays in the run game Taylor Martinez and company Roy Hallou doing so. but I think the defensive play really is inspiring this whole team you get a couple of interceptions there big plays there Makamura knocking the ball up in the air and getting an interception in the second and then Gomes taking one to the house so I think oh, I think teams really feed off defensive performance and that's what the black shirts have done here for year after year getting that kind of pride back in this in this football team when you're able to make those huge plays kind of just inspires everyone last week Bo Pelini said absolute embarrassment the defense I think this week you give them two thumbs up yeah there's no doubt about it both sides of the ball offensively defensively we even talk about the kicking game really just on all cylinders hitting right there so I think that they came out in this ball game trying to improve from week one and they really have so they've got to continue to grow there this may give them an opportunity to get some more players in the ball game that'll get some good quality seasoning and timing in case you have some injuries down the road and to do it against an offense that's really better than it was last week you know they're facing a tougher offense today in Idaho I think they're a more seasoned more veteran ball club than what they faced last week in Western Kentucky so being able to go against a bowl team that won a bowl game last year I think is a good step in the right direction for for a team here as it continued to grow in 2010 so Gary it's going to be fun to watch what happens from here as Nebraska looks like they've got everything rolling now and you know the three quick plays for those touchdowns to really separate themselves from the Vandals. Yeah kind of running pretty fast you can take a look at what they've done over those possessions you know pretty quick drives you see the field goal and the fumble there that they had the sack fumble on on the, on the second drive but over that you take a look at those numbers pretty good stuff there with uh, the offense they're clicking away. Well you look at the offense it was kind of sputtering along just a little bit until this play by Martinez 67 yards. Yeah, El Matador there does a good job of hiding the ball inside and taking it around the edge and huge huge speed there and a big play there for his offense and guess what he's going to get his buddy in the action here and Halu just outruns it with a good blocking on the outside I talked about him and, and he's got the speed folks he's back he's healthy Halu I think he can have another great year. And then the defense chips in as well with an interception and a return by Gomes for a touchdown. And Bo Pelini's crew has this one under control at 24 to nothing. With 222 rushing yards, that's really amazing. I mean, what what they're able to do on the ground. Now don't forget, coming up next for your pay-per-view pleasure it'll be South Dakota State on Saturday September 25th the time still to be announced but that's another home game for Nebraska after next week's game at Washington so the Vandals after that injury timeout come back on the field with their best field position after a kickoff at the 22 <laughs> that's pretty good stuff you get out there a couple of yards past the 20. <laughs> Enderly given time and a good pass across the middle as he's able to find his receiver Eric Hag with the stop there and Kama Bailey came across the middle with a catch. We got some role some defensive players in there change up the defensive linemen in there Baker Steinfeld are out and so is Jared Crick so you're going to get some depth and get some opportunity to work some younger guys in there. Josh Williams in there. Just a sophomore getting some, getting some experience. Second and two. The give here to McCarty. He's got a hole and a first down to the 34. Thaddeus Randall with the stop. We talked about the Idaho offense and being experienced, juniors, seniors, those guys across the board. Good size too. You know, they're not they're not they're not small guys whatsoever. So they've got a good opportunity to push some people around and this is good opportunity I think for the young defense here the defense alignment that are now in the game for Nebraska to go against somebody different than who you play against in practice all the time and get a good chance to work in live action five minutes left 
here in the first half. Enderly with an empty backfield. Bobbles the ball, picks it up. Is in trouble now, gets rid of it, and it'll fall incomplete. Well, he was leveled after the throw, too, by Randall. Well, there's a couple of balls now that he's dropped, got on the ground here that he's had to pick up, so Enderly just, you know, it's not it's his fault. He's just not catching the football, and you got some pressure here. You know, the defense, it always seems that they kind of smell what's happening, and they make those opportunities, get those opportunities to get back there and make a hit on him and disrupt the throw. Randall, a redshirt freshman out of Galena Park, Texas. Second and ten. McCarty trying to get the edge. He won't get it. Tanars came up from his safety spot and made the hit right at the line. Well, good job by Tanars of just being able to pace the ball inside there. And he's just going to step in and step up and come up and then make the play on the outside. That's in that alley that you have to be there as a safety and come up and just clean up whatever's there. That's exactly what you like to do. Good pace inside out. Not a big hurry to do anything. And watch him just kind of track down the running back. And well played. So no gain. It's third and ten. Double tight ends to the high side. And Nebraska will take their first time out of the half. So Nebraska taking a 30-second timeout here to get on the same page. Carl Pelini talking about his special relationship with his younger brother, Bo, and that they have such a unique chemistry. I mean, you're brothers, and you grow up in the same house with eight kids, and then you see that you can come to this level and coach at this level. It's, it's really amazing to watch the progression of the Pelini brothers here at Nebraska. You know, they've had a, had a good chemistry and they work well together. And, you know, primarily on the defensive side of the ball. And you know, we've had some departures and had some growth here with the defensive side of the ball. And one of the guys we had a chance to talk to, Jerry Crick, you know, when he came, since he's come in here, we're talking about what has been different since he's come here to Nebraska with this new defensive group. Well, here's the whole family, the Pelini family tree. And uh, both Bo and Carl talk about their mom and dad, Mary Kay and Anthony Pelini. Three sisters. Nancy, Mary, and Ann, and look at their professions. How about his brothers? One owns a steel mill, another's a chef, one's a cardiologist, and then, of course, the two coaches. Well, the only thing I, I can see in there, you need a banker in there, and, you know, if we get a banker, then, uh, then, then we'll get a, a whole look there that all these guys, are, no, but that's a good group. I mean, they're very successful. That's the thing you're looking at, and very, very quality family. You talked about the, the family and how his parents really felt like they were all inclusive with everything that they did. Carl was saying that he'll hear it from his brothers after the game. Wow. Another pickoff here. This one by Tanars. And he'll go to the house. Well, if they're going to call Carl and Bo after this game, the brothers and sisters, it'll be high praise. <laughs> Well, Tanars, he's just playing cat back there in the secondary, and he breaks on this throw, and what a great job of just, uh, just looking at the football and coming back for it. So Tanars is right here, and he's going to come by and make this, make this catch right here. What a, what a good job of breaking on the throw, and Tanars does a good job of finishing the play and getting it to the end zone. It's great anticipation, and no one will go, go to the football, and most importantly, no one making the grab. The Huskers have scored four touchdowns today, two by the offense, two by the defense. Pretty good day. <laughs> I should say Pretty so. Pretty balanced. Spreading it around. Henry with the point after. So he'll tack on another. It's 31 to nothing, Nebraska. Well, Tanaris is in coverage in the secondary, and so he's back here, and he's got this inside seam. So when he sees the quarterback look, and he's just going to break on the outside, gets underneath that throw, and well done. One of the things they noticed about Enderley in watching film is a lot of times he won't look off receivers. He'll lock in on one. And there, you certainly saw a great move inside by Tenars. With more on the way that the Black Shirts are playing, let's go down to the sideline and Brent Stover. Well, a couple of pick sixes always looks good, but how about Ricky Tenars and the story? You talked about him battling the knee injury last year. He's from Los Angeles, really rough neighborhood, gang crossfire where he grew up. But he had a great camp and uh, has really made a lot out of himself. This is a senior that lost two brothers in separate shootings back in 08. He missed time that season with a dislocated collarbone to go with last year's knee injury. He was shot in the leg as a high school freshman. Just really one of those success stories. And I know the Polinis are very proud of him. Had a good game last week and back this week even better with that.
pick six, his first action in almost 12 months. That one went 47 yards. Well, the 23 is where this time the Vandals will start their offense. But how about this? For the first time in Nebraska football history, the Cornhuskers return not one but two interceptions for a touchdown. It's never happened before here. That's amazing. That's, that's a, it's a huge opportunity to put points on the board and make big plays. And opportunistic defense, when you're able to turn you know, big plays into points, there's no there's no way to really recover from that on an offensive side. You just got to go back and, and fire out there. And Nate Enderly, you know, things have not really gone his way. It's really because I think the secondary play here for Nebraska has really been exemplary today. McCarty. Trying to just slow things down a little bit. I think that play call was just a. All right, let's regroup here, guys. I mean, we've had a couple of picks here. Nebraska's rolling. It's 31 to nothing. Let's just run a play and get that clock wound down. Yeah, you've got to get some semblance of balance, being able to move the chains a little bit, takes a little pressure off the defense. And you know, defense really hadn't been out there. It's just been the Nebraska defense scoring so quickly because they're getting the football. This is the first meeting ever for Nebraska against any team from the state of Idaho. After a gain of four, second and six. And the give here is to Jackson. He's got room on the outside. Finally, Levante David wraps him up near midfield. But a good run there by Deontay Jackson. Good recovery by David to push him out of bounds. So a gain of 21 there for Jackson. One of the biggest plays from the line of scrimmage today for the Vandals. Tripped up at the line, McCarty. And Gomes comes in on the stop. Yeah, chipping away here, just trying to get move the football, getting first downs, taking it off of the quarterback, Nate Enderley, not asking him to throw the football. Run, run, run. You know, last week. It was some plays that they didn't like to defensively. Carlton talked about that, you know what, trying to shore things up. But uh, this has been a pretty good effort all around here for Nebraska today, both offensively, defensively, and slowing down this run game. Here comes Jackson again. Nice move at the line to cut back and get to the 40 for a first down. Tenars with the stop there. The Huskers last week, Gary, gave up 10 points. They averaged, the opponents did, 10.4 against Nebraska last year, which led the nation in defensive scoring. Yeah, that's exactly right. So this is a defense that just understands that keeping out of the end zone most importantly and good things are going to happen for you. You could see some of that chemistry right there between Carl and Bo talking to each other on the sidelines. Enderly with the toss to the outside to his biggest receiver Eric Greenwood and he is stopped at the 30 by Dennard but looks like it's going to be another first down. Yeah, let's take a look inside here defensive tackle and Baker Steinkiller right there on the middle of your screen and he's just going to get a good job push on the guard gets a hit on the quarterback and he's been working hard all day. I've watched him quite a bit out there and see how well he's progressing with his defense and it seems that he's continually getting double teams but on singles he's able to get back there. Enderley stands in there takes a hit but gets it to Elmo and he dives inside the 20 down to the 17. Uh, Mukamara with the stop there, but that was a gutsy play by Enderley. Yeah, don't be surprised. This offense continues to click. They, you know, they may grow a little bit more in this in this game. You get settled down, make some adjustments. Crowd urging on the black shirts, and the pass is dropped. Intended for the tight end Daniel Hardy. You know we've got an offensive coordinator for uh, Idaho. Steve Axman, who's been at this game a long time, and you know he's a pretty smart guy, and he's kind of authored a number of books in regards to offensive performance. So I think making adjustments in game is not really something that's foreign to him, and he'll make some adjustments to get his team in the right position. Axman, the uh, offensive coordinator for the Vandals, coach Troy Aikman at UCLA. Second charge, timeout, Nebraska. And Nebraska will take a timeout here. You look at the numbers on Enderley today. 8 for 18, which is so far below his normal average. He's a guy that normally gets around 65% pass completions. Yeah, those are the numbers you'd like to have, and not there today. You know, he's, he's thrown the ball on his receivers, but the defense has been right there. And so one ball tipped up that was really could have gone either way, tipped up to the defense. Right in Nebraska gets that one. But, you know, some of the plays that the defense in the secondary has for Nebraska on the football today, I think have just been spot on. I think 
for Enderley to have a, a veteran offensive coordinator like Steve Axman at the helm and guiding him and you know he's able to rely on all of his experience Axman with tutoring guys like Troy Aikman at UCLA and we asked him well how do you compare Enderley he says well not maybe compared to Aikman but he says Enderley's got not only a shot at making it into the NFL but a very good shot and you see all the places that Axman has been throughout his wonderful career yeah, and working with players working with the quality players Troy Aikman obviously top of the list there as far as the quarterback goes uh, over his days at UCLA kind of set him up for his success in the National Football League and Enderley I think he's going to get an opportunity to show his players and where he'll actually go and how that'll actually unfold is yet, yet to be seen. Second and ten. A little shovel pass inside to Bailey, and Nebraska was right there. Jared Crick says, uh-uh, not on my watch. Yeah, get off the block and make the play. Jared Crick is taking up a couple of guys inside all the time Third and, and does a good job of coming out. off the block. Idaho. Watch him inside there. A little slap, uppercut, trying to move the guard around, just waiting for the back to come loose. He sees it all the way. Amazing strength by Crick. I mean, he's fighting off the blocker the entire way, but always has his eyes in the backfield. Talking about guys that are ranked to play on Sundays, Crick is the number one ranked defensive lineman in the country. No doubt about that. He's got a, he's got the motor up there. He's got the ability to to put that together, and you know. Talk to him a little bit about you know since he's been here in Nebraska and you know I talked about how things have changed with Carl Pliny and Bo Pliny and his thoughts on that. I definitely say now well we're a lot we're more of a team we're a lot more united than when I first got when I first got here you know a lot of it is about individuals and, and, and their strides and what they want not what the team want and what the team needs and what they were more worried about themselves but now it's, it's a family atmosphere and guys really care about each other more than they do themselves. And I really think that's really been the cornerstone of our success, with guys more concerned about the team's needs than their own. Well, certainly a team comes first with yeah. Bo Pelini, Carl Pelini, the entire coaching staff, and these players, and they've all bought into it. And I don't know if there's a more perfect fit than a Bo Pelini in the University of Nebraska. Absolutely a perfect marriage. And one thing he understands is team chemistry, and he understands Pass tradition, interference. too. Defense, number 13, penalty enforced at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Yeah, P.J. Smith getting called there for the, for the pass interference penalty. But talking about Pelini, Bo Pelini, and I think he understands the tradition here, how important it is, what it means to these fans and this family here in Husker Nation, and uh, he embraces it. Enderley looking to run now, being tracked down by Steinkuhler. Steinkuhler and Crick. They closed the gap in a hurry. Oh, that's a couple. That's a pair that I'm not sure you want to be running close to. <laughs> those two big guys, I tell you, you take a look at those guys together, and that's a pretty mountain of most size right there. 50, 94 and 55, just watch them track the quarterback. They never give up. They may stumble and bumble a little bit, but going to get there. And the guy that Crick is going against, Tapua, weighs 375 pounds. A toss here from Enderley is caught Gomes on the tight coverage but again so accurate Enderley able to get the pass and squeeze it in there at the five. Yeah, so now you come up in a third and goal situation here and Coach Aikie going to go in here no huddle get up the line of scrimmage and get a play put it in the end zone. Enderley sacked. Steinkohler was the first one there. Talked about Baker Steinkiller and how he's been going all day long. They've been double teaming him quite a bit, but when he gets a single block, he has the ability. He's 6'6, 290, folks. He can really push the pocket and got back there for the nice sack. Farquhar to put some points on the board, and he does a 34 yard field goal right as the first half is coming to a close. That's a great job by the Vandals on special teams to get their field goal unit out there that quickly. That's great transition. Good job. Good coaching. By Rob A could get his team ready to go and get points on the board. Don't come away empty in that situation, and they did so. So 31 to 3, the halftime score. Again, two touchdowns by the offense on long run, 67 yards from Martinez, 58 yards by Halu, and then two interception returns for touchdowns. One by Gomes of 40 yards, one by Tenars of 47 yards. And now we'll go down to the sideline where Brent Stover is 
down there and tracking down the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Bo Pelini. Brent? Well, what do you think of the defense in the first half? I saw a lot of good things. I thought we got tired there at the end of the first half and got a little winded there and, you know, we got a little sloppy. But uh, overall, I thought it was, uh, I saw some good things. You guys really rattled a, a pretty darn good quarterback. Yeah, you know, we've been mixing it up the coverage and bring a little bit of pressure and trying to get him, keep him guessing a little bit. And, um, he's a good player, but uh, we just got to keep it going. Final question, Martinez, in the first half, your thoughts? I thought he did some good things. I thought, once again, he, we were sloppy in a couple areas. We, he's got to recognize a couple things that uh, – um, then he could do a little bit better, but uh, you know he, he did some good things out there too. All right, good luck, second half. Thank you, Oh Pelini, guys. Thanks a lot, Brent. And certainly a lot to be positive about here for Nebraska. Dominating first half, two long touchdown runs, two interceptions for returns, 31 to three at the half. So we pause for a break here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. The Husker marching band on the field at halftime here at Lincoln Memorial Stadium. Game number two in 2010 is 31-3. Home team here at halftime, and we head upstairs with a special guest. Here is Dave Armstrong. Thanks a lot, Brent. Well, standing by with us right now is uh, Associate Athletic Director here at the University of Nebraska, Mark Boehm. And Mark, certainly exciting times for the Huskers right now. Let's talk a little bit about the voters' approval of the Haymarket Arena that's coming here to Lincoln. Well, it's going to be exciting, and we think right now we have everything in tune for basketball for the for the future, the vision, and the Haymarket Arena is something special. And uh, it was voted on about six months ago, and we're going to play basketball there in 2013. So we're excited. That's that's very exciting news, certainly. And with this new arena, it's going to seat about 16,000, not only basketball for men and women, but also some concerts and other great venues. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's going to be a development. It was a project of uh, over uh, $300 million. We'll have restaurants that'll be developed uh, outside. It's just much more than an, in an arena. And so, uh, again, 2013, and we're going to brand it Nebraska basketball. So that, that's the beauty of it. We're going to have meetings this week, and uh, we're going to talk about how how we can brand it, put that in right there on that side of the building. So when you bring recruits in, you're going to have that right there. Mark, certainly everything is about facilities these days. And one of the things in college basketball now, certainly practice facilities. What's going to happen there for the men and the women? Well, it's the, the Hendricks Training Complex, and it'll be open in uh, 2000, uh, or next, next year, 2011, September. And so we're really excited about that. And uh, it's just going to be great. It's, we built it for the student athlete, similar to what the Osborne Complex is. Uh, the strength and conditioning will double in size. Uh, the athletic medicine will triple in size. And so we put a lot of the resources back into the players, and we felt that was important. And one of the other things is we visited various sites. We visited Oklahoma. We visited A&M and Missouri. We got some ideas. Um, and, and one of the things is we got an idea of what not to do. And that was uh, to make sure that the uh, practice courts were soundproof. And so we're putting a lot of money into that to make sure that the, the teaching will be there for Doc and Connie. That'll be great. Now, there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen then next with the Devaney Center. And volleyball might get a new home. Well, it might, yeah, and we're looking at that right now. Um, that's the intention, is to move volleyball over to the Devaney Center. It has not been approved by the Board of Regents as of yet, but it's putting one big uh, puzzle together, and that's kind of what we're doing right now in the process. But uh, great things on the horizon for Nebraska basketball, the wrestling programs with the Hendricks uh, Complex, and, of course, volleyball. And we're really excited uh, about the future here and, and what's happening. Mark, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Dave. Great stuff, and that pretty much about covers it. Tom Osborne last week, Mark Bain, certainly thankful for him to join Dave in the booth. 31-3 at the break. More to come here at halftime in Lincoln. Longest sellout streak in NCAA history, Nebraska football. They say it's sold out, so where do you get tickets? TicketExpress.com. Get tickets on the 50 or in the club level to any Nebraska home or away football game. Ticket Express is your nationwide ticket source for all college and NFL football games. Order by phone or online. Call this toll-free 800 number or go to TicketExpress.com. Ticket Express, where no event is ever sold out. Seventh-ranked Nebraska leading Idaho at the break here in Lincoln. 31-3, great defense for the Blackshirts responding from last week when the head coach wasn't too pleased. Well, it is 9-11, and uh, nine years later in remembrance, we bring in uh, 
what better man than a police officer? 11 years on the force here in Lincoln, it's Chad Bear. And Chad, you brought the team out with uh, one of your cohorts as well as a couple of firemen and uh, a player for Nebraska who had served for six years in Iraq. Uh, pretty impressive stuff, I would imagine, for you. Yeah, it felt really good. I was a little, little nervous at first, but real humbling experience, felt good. Um, showing, um, representing my police department. And I think we also represented the other police officers out there across the country. What does this day, 9-11, mean to you? Basically, looking back of all the people that perished in the towers, as well in the planes and the Pentagon, and also the firefighter and police officers that sacrificed their life, um, trying to save people they didn't even know. So. How did that change things for you and, and the guys that you serve alongside as far as maybe pride or something like that? What changed after that day for you? Basically, like you said, it gave us a bunch of, gave me pride. I saw in the fellow officers um, showed that our job does make a difference and that we're willing to give the ultimate sacrifice and for somebody else. Typical day for you, what's it like in a nutshell? Um, basically, I just got promoted to investigator, so that's exciting. So that's uh, kind of a new transition for me. But typical day is just helping citizens out and keeping the Lincoln public safe. What would you make of the Huskers here in the first half and through the first game and a half of the season? Oh, they look pretty good. I'm sure they're not showing all their trick plays and good stuff, waiting for the kind of the bigger games. But they still they look pretty good. Well, we really appreciate the time and certainly appreciate your service, Chad. Thanks for joining us here at halftime. Thank you. Chad Bear, 11 years on the force here in Lincoln, Nebraska. More to come from Memorial Stadium. 31-3, number seven in America, the Huskers leading Idaho. Stay with us. In front of a sellout crowd here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, leading 31-3 at the half. Check out some other scores from around the conference in the Big 12. We note that Kansas has just taken a lead on Georgia Tech. It's 21-17 now to update that score. Later, it's that big rivalry between Iowa State and Iowa. Florida State and Oklahoma, big test today for OU. Yeah, Oklahoma didn't show real well last week. They need to play better today against Florida State. Colorado taking on California, precursor of them going to the Pac-10 conference, and Texas and Wyoming later on tonight. Texas A&M gets a test from Louisiana Tech, Buffalo at Baylor, and Monique State will take on Missouri. And once again here, it's Nebraska leading 31 to three at the half with Gary Reasons. I'm Dave Armstrong, and Gary, certainly it was a, a slow start, you'd have to say, for Nebraska. They led only three to nothing after the first quarter, but boy, did they pour it on in the second quarter. Well, they kind of got things rolling. They did in a big way because of their quarterback, Taylor Martinez, just set the place on fire with his running and his elusiveness and being able to make huge plays in the run game. Taylor Martinez on this run really electrified this crowd and really got everything kick-started. I tell you, just a huge run, just deceptive play inside brings it around on the zone read and just takes it the speed this young man has is very impressive in how he gets to top speed very very quickly almost 100 yards rushing for Martinez in the first half then hello yeah hello junior does a good job getting to the outside got good blocking and his speed and his his ability to take the play all the way down the field he shows you that this running game is potent for the Huskers so offensively certainly running the ball Nebraska back on track defensively today you'd have to say a much better effort from the black shirts well they've had pressure they've had a lot of good play in the secondary and I think Nate Enderley who's a quarterback for Idaho really has been pressured a little bit too much in this football game and his throws are not as accurate as they like to be and the defense has made some big plays when you take a chance here and get the ball popped up in the air and you get an interception run back for a touchdown as Gomes does here this is one of two today here for the Husker defense ball pulled down again in the secondary this is this is something that you'd like to see of your defense make big plays I tell you, put points on the board. You just can't answer that as an offense. Tenaris with the pick and the touchdown there. And then, of course, the big sack here by Jared Crick. Three interceptions thrown by Enderley today. Yeah, and pretty pr pretty good pressure there up front. Talk about uh, Baker Stein, Cooler, and Crick, and those guys are doing a pretty good job inside. Well, you look at the overall numbers, and what really stands out to me there is the 222 rushing yards. Yeah, they can just, they're exploded rushing the football, you know, running the ball down the field. Total yards, just total domination here I think for by Nebraska so Nebraska dominating certainly Idaho it's a good word Gary it's 31 to 3 at the half back with a second half in a moment so Nebraska comes back out onto the field here at Memorial Stadium leading 31 to 3 
Uh, statistically and in every other way, it was a dominating first half for Nebraska. Let's get you down before we start the second half. Brent Stover standing by with the Vandals head coach, Rob Akey. All right, thanks. And, Coach, your impressions of the opening two quarters? I wasn't real happy about the opening two quarters. It wasn't much fun. But at least we got some points on the board there at the end. I want to see our guys just come out here and play. thought we had some chances to make some plays. But, obviously, we got to move the ball better. we got to get our defense back to getting them stopped. But, you know, the, we gave up two touchdowns on offense also. I think we just need to execute, go play, and give ourselves a chance to make something happen. Do you feel like it was nerves? Or why did Nate Anderley get rattled a little bit in that first half? Well, I don't know how much. He was a little bit rattled. I think our team was a little bit rattled. I thought we did some things okay. I I also thought, you know, one of those interceptions, I thought we could have gone and got the damn ball instead of letting the other guy go get it. It's a matter of making a play. But we got them all recombobrated again, and we're going to get after it this half. Good luck second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. That's like Wolfman Jack on the sidelines. I, 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 I've never heard recombobulated before, but maybe they do. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. Well, you look at the sidelines for Nebraska, and a lot of these guys are thinking, I'm going to get some playing time here today. Yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of guys get a chance to get on the field if this continues with, the, with this trend. So let's run down some numbers for you for Nebraska. Martinez rushed for 92 yards. He also threw for 60 yards. Halu ran for 81 yards. Burkhead ran for 49. On the receiving end, Niles Paul had three receptions for 22 yards. McNeil caught a couple of passes for 17 yards. Brandon Kinney caught a couple for 11 yards. And Burkhead also caught one pass for five yards. There were three sacks of the day for the defense three interceptions for the day and how much will we see of Taylor Martinez here in the second half. Yeah, I'm not really sure how much they're going to play him or what if they even will play him or just continue to roll through the other two quarterbacks that are with him. But I, I would imagine they need to get him some more game speed game reps and that's how the only way you're going to grow as a quarterback or as a player is go through repetition. The players all talk about Martinez. So does Sean Watson the offensive coordinator saying you know what he just wants the ball. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about fame. He doesn't care about talking to the media talking even to his own teammates. He's a very quiet kid but he can do it with the ball. Now he's one of those guys that talks with his with his play. That's what it is. And you know as he, as he gets more comfortable I think the other players around him the seniors that are out there the juniors that have been experienced and been here they're going to be the ones that be more vocal and they'll lead around him but he'll just play with his uh, with his with what he's capable of doing and so far it's been pretty good. About ready to start the second half. Remember at the beginning of the game Nebraska won the toss they deferred so they'll get the ball first here in the third quarter. Quarter. Trey Farquhar will kick it off and the deep man is Tim Marlowe standing back at his own three yard line. And the kick is going into the end zone. Marlowe will down it there and Nebraska will start at their own 20 yard line. Good kick there by Farquhar. Well, Martinez is going to get the start here in the second half. Going to get some more opportunities there and see. Uh, what they do with him here, you know, we talked to Sean Watson, uh, the offense coordinator, about what he's going to do with this, with this, with his quarterback, and talked about the progression of things and learning things. He says they've thrown it all at him already, and now they're just looking for different situations to come up within the game, even in practice, so that he can work on those different things. You know, not in the conference play yet, so this is an opportunity to really build your skill set. Now Niles Paul moves into the Wildcat formation, and he fumbles the ball. Whoops! Whoops! Not the way you want to start the second half. No, not very good at all whatsoever. And trying to do a little wildcat there, and it just fumbled it right off the hip there. And Miles Paul did not pull that ball out very well and just went off the hip. And the defender for Idaho right there to jump on top of it. Now jumping on that ball, Aaron Lavarius. And the turnover there for the Huskers. Great field position now for Idaho. They have it at the Nebraska 16. Well, a real test to start the second half for the Black Shirts. McCarty with the handoff. He has stood up right at the line of scrimmage, maybe got a yard. Good play defensively again by Amukamara. Martin also in on the stop, Eric Martin. Will Compton, by the way. They're expecting to get him back in four to six weeks. Sean Fisher, the other linebacker who is out with an injury, out for the year with a broken leg. Yeah, tough, tough, tough losses there. So you've got some news on the defense of the linebacker spot there with Devontae David and Alonzo Whaley playing back there. Second down, seven yards to go. McCarty 
hit hard right at the line by Pierre Allen. Yeah, right there in the middle of it is Jared Crick, number 94. He gets right off the block, and bingo, he hits him right in the hole first, I think, Dave. Watch some of the left side of the screen there. Crick gets up, and oh, you're right, just right in the hole there, but Crick's on the bottom of it. And just, just a wall of red right there. <laughs> you don't want to run into that. Yeah, it was Steinkuhler and Allen, and then Crick kind of finished him off. So no gain there. It's third and seven. Here comes the blitz. Almost another pick. That could be offensive pass interference. Standing in the way there, Alfonso Dennard, and he almost had a pick. Yeah, but I'm not sure that uh, Nate Ennerly got the route that he was expected from his receiver. Looks to me like the receiver just kind of sh shut it down a little bit, didn't spring it all the way in, slow it down. Then the defender just taking an inside position, and he's going to make that play before the offensive player can. So good job by Dennard there trying to break on the football. Landon Weaver kind of cut his route short. 30 yard attempt here by Farquhar. The kick is on its way and it's no good. So Farquhar, who hit one from 34 yards, misses here from 30. Well, opportunity goes away here for the Vandals coming off on that, uh, that series. And Rob Aiki cannot turn a turnover into points. So a break for the Nebraska Cornhuskers after the turnover on the first play. And here he just hooked it. Yeah, just a little bit of a pull there and just outside the post. So no Wildcat formation this time around. Burkhead, he's got the corner. And a nice gain on first down of 10 yards. El Metador. <laughs> yeah, just gives it to him now this time. And Burkhead does a nice job of coming around the edge, and he's got the speed too. So, all these running backs here for Nebraska are doing a good job today. Halu and Burkhead, and obviously when you call up a running back, Taylor Martinez, he's getting the job done as well. Gary, I'm surprised at how long he holds the ball on his uh, running back's hip. I mean, he just holds it and holds it, and then all of a sudden he makes a quick decision. Well, that's what the read is. He's reading that defensive tackle and defensive end to see how they're going to play that inside run game and. There's an opportunity to give it. He'll leave it in there. If not, he'll take it around the edge. And they've got the pitch on it, too. We've seen all of that as a performance today for that progression on that offensive play. Pass on target to Niles Paul. That's good for nine yards. It'll bring up second and one. JoJo Dixon in on the stop there. You know, second and one here is, is part of the field. It's always kind of a dangerous call for the defense, really, because the offense can call just about anything that they want to and feel confident about getting something going here. Maybe you can take a big strike down the field, and this might be an opportunity to see what kind of arm uh, Taylor Martinez might have. Cotton goes in motion. The pitch out, Burkhead. And he gets across the 45 to the 47. Grimes had the stop there. Yeah, Searles on the left side, the left tackle, number 71. Watch him get his block here. He kind of walls right there and get that, that block there on the outside. That's what kind of took everything inside of him. Jeremiah Searles is just a redshirt freshman. So Sean Watson trying to mix things up a little bit, trying to get different personnel in there and give the defense something to look at here. And kind of more of a more vanilla look. Really not too, uh, too exotic here with their offensive deployment here of what they've done today. Martinez drops back to throw, looking deep. Burkhead's got it over his shoulder. Nice catch by Burkhead. Forced out by Grimes, but that pass on target. Well, when you're a quarterback and you can stand in there and just kind of look around the field and step into this throw without anybody within three or four yards of you, that means your offensive front is doing a good job in keeping you clean. And Burkett gets a nice ball here from his quarterback. Look at the pressure here. No pressure whatsoever on Taylor Martinez. This is like passing seven on seven here, folks. Good job by the Husker line of keeping him clean. Nice grab there, too, by Burkett as well. well. Grimes got there, but a little bit too late and a nice catch. Now Robinson in their tailback and now we're going to have illegal movement by the offense dead ball false start offense number 74 five yard penalty still first down that penalty called against ricky henry last year they were telling us that henry played most of the year with a shoulder injury and the coaches were so enamored with 
you know how he just stayed in there how tough he was and so you know he, he never missed a practice he never missed a game and you never would have known that he had a shoulder injury at all yeah you've got to have those kinds of players you know they had some problems last year in that offensive line and really kind of decimated and kind of some, some challenges there and five yard penalty backs him up first and 15 Martinez on the option again found a lane and, and a, a flag, flag coming yeah. in from the far side KO makes the stop kind of a veteran offensive line coming back here we talked a little bit about that and the only one change there is Mike Caputo the center personal foul clipping offense mm. number 81 15 yard penalty replay first down that's the second personal foul call on Ben Cotton today I'm not really sure where it's at not seeing it probably behind the play so mm -hmm. Oh, that's it's not seeing it. Boy, it backs it all the way up to the 42 yard line. Wow. So first down, but 30 yards to go. Well, that's nothing for Taylor Martinez. <laughs> Just take it around the edge. Ben Cotton going over the sideline. I'm sure his dad Barney is going to give him an earful. Barney Cotton, of course, the offensive line coach of the Huskers. Timeout taken here by Taylor Martinez. First so a shaky start Nebraska. here to the second half for Nebraska. They fumble on their first possession. Now backed up with a first and 30. And a timeout for Martinez and company. It's still 31-3 Nebraska. Well, if you go to California, you see beach balls in the crowd. Here at Nebraska, they do it in a bigger way. A big body going through the, through the crowd. <laughs> When you look at Bo Pelini, and he was almost out of coaching. He said, I was around 25 years old, almost out. And he said, I actually had taken a job with Nike. Then the San Francisco 49ers called. They wanted him to be a scout. Yeah. And he said, I had nothing to do at night. So instead of hanging around the hotel, I just decided to go in and kind of help break down film on the defensive end. Yeah, Ray sat, Rhodes noticed. Yeah, sat there and watched tape with him and then realized he had some insight. And then they wound up offering him a position there to keep getting back into coaching as an assistant coach and also as a scout. So that kind of continued his career and then he grew into it. And now he's the head coach of the University of Nebraska. And the rest, as they say, is history. Martinez on the draw play. And get out of the grasp of the tackle and is able to gain about five yards. With more on that, how about let's go down to the sideline and Brent Stover. Well, I thought it was interesting, guys, yesterday, Bo telling us at the meeting, I'm not the easiest guy to play for, but my players know that no matter what, good or bad, however much I yell at them, I always have their best interests in mind. My door is always open to chat, laugh, have fun. But when it's time to work, it's time to work. Yeah, once he steps across that white line, it's all business and the players respect that they love the honesty of this coaching staff Martinez lots of time to throw now the pocket collapses and he is sacked maybe held on to it too long yeah just the clock you know the clock is ticking 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 you got to get rid of that football and whether you do that or you make a break with your legs and he just tried to hang in there too long and the offensive line just couldn't hold him take a look here on the outside you see the pressure and then this there rush linebacker here Mayawa doing a good job of just coming off the block and getting there. Now Nebraska had the ball all the way down to the 22 yard line then the personal foul call and uh, sputtering here with third and 27 they need to reach the 12 for a first down. Throw to the outside good hands Robinson. And then some extracurricular, perhaps. Yeah, they had the double double screen there, either side of the ball. There, they could have he could have thrown it either way. So, just trying to make a play to the outside. And good job, good timing here by the defense, and just knocking the ball down as he throws it in the air. So a nice tip. And then after that, a little push on the part of. Robert C of EE. So KO back to receive the pawn of Henry. And he is really good at the coffin kick. And this one goes out of bounds inside the 10. Well, he, he is, I mean, talk about a dual threat. Great place kicker, but also a good punter. And really good on the coffin kick. So it'll be 
Idaho starting inside their 10 at the nine yard line offensively. Look at the Idaho Vandals. They feel like they've turned the corner, but this is a year they need to build off from last year. They're wondering can they win nine or more last year eight and five but look at the first two years as he was trying to build it now we'll see can Idaho step up this year and win eight or nine games this season. Well I think they feel like they can they're in a very very tough conference though in the white conference with the Boise and the like so they've, they've got their work ahead of them but I think that they feel like they've got the talent to compete within that conference and you know they're they're kind of circling November 12th on their schedule which is a home game against Boise State what they feel like is their best their biggest rival and they feel like they'll be able to compete with those guys. Yeah they, they came into the FBS at the same time started playing division one at the same time and obviously Boise State is just That's taking a huge chance, leap yeah. they're third ranked in the country and that game will be at the Kibbe Dome and I'm sure it'll be packed for that one back to this game. Good move by Jackson on the corner and he's able to get up to the 23 yard line Gomes forces him out there. The linebacker missing a tackle on the sideline there that's Levante David number four who should make this tackle on the outside but he just doesn't do it just doesn't get him right there boom and he gets another seven or eight yards so you got to play patient you got to be able to be there and make those plays when you need to and, and overran it. So a first down up to the 24. Enderly tries to throw it to the outside and it's batted down at the line by Allen. Yeah, Pierre Allen, we haven't talked a lot about him, but he's one of the guys as a defensive end can put a lot of pressure here at the bottom of the screen. Watch him just kind of time it, push, push, push. And when your quarterback sets, you know he's going to get there, get your hand up. It's good coaching, good opportunity to get in the throwing Legal lane. Legal formation, offense, five men in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Second out. So with no gain on first down they'll decline the five yard penalty and make it second and ten for Enderley. Yeah, nothing's really been easy here for, for Enderley in this football game. This defense has done a good job putting pressure on him all day and obviously the play in the secondary being very very close to the receivers. He's been having to fit all those throws right on those receivers and hasn't had some good luck. It's an interception so this has not been a stellar performance by this Idaho offense. The give in the backfield to Jackson and again not much room to run in there when you have guys like Stein Cooler and Allen and Crick defending that line. A lot of people wonder all right how would this defensive front four react without Indomitian Sue on that front four and you know so far so good they haven't taken on the caliber of opponents that they'll see later on in the Big 12 conference but you'd have to say with Crick and Allen and Stein Cooler and Cameron Meredith when he's healthy pretty good front four. I think it's pretty good. I think the, the question mark really for me is how are the linebackers going to continue to improve and fit. This might be another interception almost. Boy. Amuka Mero was right there on the tight coverage. This is he's right on the football and almost has a chance to come up with that. I was talking about the linebacker playing. You know there's some in some out and whether what they're going to do and throwing the football here and he's right there. You're seeing why uh, Prince is regarded as one of the best cover corners in the in the country and doing a good job today. In many publications, a preseason All America, Prince of Mucamara. Paul waiting for it, a high kick. He'll signal for the fair catch and grab it at the 22 yard line. So we've got a timeout here with 727 left in the third quarter. The Huskers still leading it 31 to 3. Oh, looks good. A little tailgating action here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oof. Do they deliver? Those are good looking steaks <laughs> on the grill. Well, here at Nebraska, sold out again. And it's amazing the over 300 consecutive sellouts. And a lot of people just, oh, well, it's another sellout. No, that is an amazing streak that Nebraska has going in. Who knows how long that will last for years and years to come. And yeah, they're going for actually for their 500th win in Lincoln today. And uh, played majority of those at Memorial Stadium, but uh, over the years. 500 wins in this town so that's pretty impressive to get that today. Nebraska starts on offense at the 23 yard line and the give here to Halu and 
He has stood up after a gain of about four. JoJo Dixon, the linebacker, came up to make that stop. And you see 306 consecutive sellouts. Great tradition, great fan support. Just one of the marquee programs in the country. 85,732. They say the eighth largest crowd in Nebraska history. They knew you'd be here, Dave, so they, they came out for <laughs> came you. Out. <laughs> Gain of four, second and six. Martinez, look out. Trying to wiggle out of it and then throws the interception. Shiloh K.O. with the interception. C.O.V.E. with the pressure from the outside. There is a flag on the play. Well, Taylor Martinez probably trying to do just a little bit too much here. He does see the backside corner blitz. It's a, it's a blind cat blitz, and so that's what's going to come on the pressure and cause him to not be able to step into a throw and try to elude that pressure, trying to throw it away, but gets in trouble for it. After the interception, interception. personal foul, foul, face mask, face mask. defense, defense. Mm. Half the distance to the goal, first down. That'll take it down to about the 12-yard line. Well, we haven't talked a lot about Shiloh Keo for the defense for uh, Keo here for the defense, but he's one of their better players. You see the backside blitz there and gets him, and then Taylor Martinez trying to throw down the field, but Keo does a good job standing underneath, and he's one of their best defensive players. He's an all-whack performer as a safety, and good job of bringing down the football. Second turnover for Nebraska. One fumble, one interception there for Martinez. The first interception he's thrown. We talked to Sean Watson yesterday. He said, look, the kid's still on a learning curve, and he'll learn from that. Straight through the gut. Nice run up the middle by Deontay Jackson, the leading rusher today for the Vandals. And Nebraska has really done a good job of protecting their end zone here over you know, recent weeks and recent ga or games over the years. And Good job of running the ball inside by Idaho. Last week in the, in the fourth quarter, they allowed a touchdown. The first time here, they allowed a touchdown in 13 quarters. So, yeah, last year they only allowed five touchdowns in seven home games. But right now, it's the Vandals knocking on the door at the three yard line. Stood up at the two yard line is Jackson. And it was Alonzo Whaley coming up to make the stop. Good stick there by the linebacker, stepping up in the hole. Alonzo Wade, number 45, watching the right side. He's going to stick into the hole there. Bingo. Whaley, who says that Will Compton is like a blood brother to him. He had to step in for Compton last week after Compton went out with a late injury. Well, second and goal from the two. Anderley, play action into the end zone. Touchdown, Idaho. Touchdown pass for the Vandals, making the grab Michael Legrone. Yeah, kind of a naked bootleg here with the tight end coming off the block and just get working into the end zone. He's lined up at the right side, number 80. He just comes out underneath, actually, from the backside. And hard to do that in the red area and the goal line area to be able to cover that backside tight end coming behind the line of scrimmage. So the Idaho Vandal crowd or group, you might say, that's here cheering on the Vandals celebrate that touchdown and the second half belongs to the Idaho Vandals some sloppy play by the Huskers here in the second half and after the interception a quick drive and a two yard touchdown pass to Michael LeGrove. When you look at the turnovers today the turnovers forced Idaho is forced three they have seven points off those turnovers Nebraska with three interceptions today. Zach Potter of the Jacksonville Jaguars had two receptions for 33 yards with his longest reception. Well, here is Martinez trying to do a little bit too much, Gary, and then it results in the pick. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes. You make those plays and you want to pull that one back and put that in the memory banks of don't do that again. But Shiloh Kao doing a good job of bringing the ball down. This turns into seven points here for, for Idaho. So you're going to punch that ball in. Good job, misdirection there, a little boot pass. and. Idaho capitalizes. Now they had that same situation early in the ball game, missed a field goal, so didn't get anything off of points there. But so the only seven points on the three turnovers they have, and really kind of the difference for Nebraska, they've got the 21 points of turnovers. You know, one, one of the things that Nebraska prided themselves on last year was their execution, especially in the second half. Now for the second straight week, Bo Pelini is going to have something to 
be upset about with his team. They've come out kind of flat here in the second half. Well, it's one of those things that coaches talk about is attention to detail and every little detail. And you've got to do your job and make sure you're doing what everybody's supposed to do. And sometimes you make an unfortunate player mistake and it, and it costs your whole football team. And a lot of that's on the quarterback on the growth and maturity of it. You don't uh, you know, don't take care of the football and it turns into seven points very, very quickly. So Idaho scores here with 523 remaining and a little bit of concern here too for Taylor Martinez noticing over on the sideline getting a little bit of treatment on the right hand. See him over there on the sideline and just not really sure what they're doing to him. Maybe that's a cold sick or something trying to mm -hmm. cool it down. I got banged a little bit on that wrist mm -hmm. when he threw that last interception. And the kickoff goes into the end zone. Here comes Marlowe. Across the 20 to the 26. Nice run back of 27 yards for Tim Marlowe. Taylor Martinez back in the ball game here for uh, for Nebraska. It's probably not an issue with a little bump there. You so see? Martinez comes out with the Huskers starting at the 26 yard line 27 officially. Halu trying to turn the corner. Spins forward for 10. Nice run by Roy Halu Jr. Good job here on the offensive line on the right side. They're just getting a push and they're winning that corner. Watch the right side here get around and they get some pressure and they get up into the second level. Roy's just turning the corner a little bit early there. He doesn't have to go all the way around the edge because of good blocking on the right side and he does a little extra work there at the end to get a couple extra yards. 11 yards on the carry, 96 on the day for Halu. This time Martinez keeps. And he goes forward across midfield to the 49. Good read again by Martinez. Well, he just takes that ball inside and plays it down the line. Watch him what he does. He reads, 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 then pulls it out around and just quick. And he just stops and starts very, very quickly, and he's able to make some extra yardage there. So quick a little first down. What are you looking for? If you're, you're a linebacker. What are you looking for inside there? Well, the, the linebackers have to play inside out, which means if the ball's handed off inside, you got to be ready there to make the play. And then you're going to ricochet and react to the outside. It's not really going to be your responsibility on the outside because it just happens so quickly. So your safety's on the outside. They're going to come down and make that play on the outside on the edge. By the way, Martinez over 100 yards. Now Halu also over 100 yards with that razzle-dazzle spin move down to the 43-yard line. Yeah, nothing cute, nothing fancy. Just do running their plays, running their offense, executing. That's what they like to do. Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, calling a pretty good game here. Pretty vanilla here, I think, with Taylor Martinez. Nothing really too much to handle. 108 yards rushing for Martinez. Halu Jr. up to 103. A big un unbalanced formation here for him. And this time just a bull rush as he just follows the offensive line. Robert Sia. V.E. with this tackle, but another first down, they move the chain. Yeah. This is a methodic drive by the Huskers. Yeah, and this is just kind of demeaning to the defense, you know, just kind of getting hammered right there. You see that block on Pancake right there? That's what you want to have with an offensive line to be, be that physical, be that dominant. That's what the Huskers have been known for for years and years and years. And you're seeing some of that today with an offensive line group that is just taking this Idaho bunch back on, on this run game, which has been superlative. Roy takes a breather. Burkhead replaces him. And here he comes. Nope, it's Martinez keeping it. And there he goes. Martinez again. A flag comes in late. We'll see if this negates the touchdown for the moment. It's six more for Nebraska. Yeah, they may have Brandon Kinney on the outside as a whole, but this is a great job of opening it up on the inside. It's going to be down the field. And Holding offense, number 84. 10 yard penalty for the spot of foul. First down. You now it's a spot foul, but uh, this is a good job here by the offense to open it up right, inside. It's be a first down. Take a look, and you can see the block right there, and you can hold it right there, and you'll see that uh, everybody's accounted for inside. And then the speed that he just takes forward, penalties right here on the outside. That's going to be the with Brandon Kinney right there, getting a little left arm there on that shoulder. And otherwise, it's another touchdown for Taylor Martinez. That's the eighth penalty of the day against the Huskers. So it negates the touchdown run. Still, Nebraska has it. 
First down at the 23. Martinez again looking on the option, keeps it himself, takes it down to the 19. Boy, big stick in there by Grimes. Yeah, Grimes, good job. You got to lower your pads, young man, coming around that edge because there's some defensive players who want to lay the wood to you. Watch this, folks. After a four yard gain, boom. That's a rare, solid hit on Martinez. Really you alluded is. to yeah. it before. The elusiveness of <laughs> doesn't, Taylor doesn't, Martinez. Doesn't allow himself to get hit, and he seems to be able to find a way to get through those cracks. Burkhead mm -hmm. trying to turn the corner. Pretty well defended by the Vandals. And a late flag. And a late flag comes in. Going to be a hold here, looks like, on the offensive line. Yeah. Nine penalties today. Holding. Offense, number 24. Ten yard penalty, replay, second down. Well, receivers, another receiver penalty down the field. That's Niles Paul this time. Had Brandon Kinney on the previous one with the touchdown run that was negated. Now we got Niles Paul. So a couple of holding penalties against the Nebraska receivers on this drive. Boy, nine penalties today for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. That's certainly cause for concern for the Nebraska coaches. That's something they'll button up before next week at Washington, or try to anyway. Second and 14. Burkhead wiggles his way down to the 20 yard line. Mayoa with the stop there. The nine penalties totaled 108 yards against Nebraska today. Yeah. What you like to see for if you're a head coach? No doubt about that because your football team is kind of doing well, but all of a sudden you just kind of shoot yourself in the foot and bring things back. Palou is back in the backfield. On third and seven. Martinez loses the ball, That's picks that. it up, and goes in for the score. How about that? That's a hey, great. Oh, no. Oh, that's great. Called athlete. Dave, that's what athletes do for you. You're able to make plays. You know, you think this is going to be a touchdown. You look at it up top here, right away he'll break through. But then you get one hand on the football, knocks it out, and he has the presence to be able to pick it back up and put it in the, in the end zone. So a little bit of fortune uh, right there for Martinez to get that ball back, but uh, looked like it's going to be a big play anyway. Well, he, he went from looking like great football quarterback to Ozzie Smith of the Cardinals, the wizard, <laughs> and then back into the end zone again. A 20 yard touchdown run for Taylor Martinez. A little bit of zone read here, takes it back. Oops, now you see him, now you don't. El Matador goes again. You know, he just pulls it out. It's kind of letting everything go by him, but he almost a problem there with the with the fumble. See the cornerback coming in there, knocking it out. That's Kenneth Patton knocks the ball out. But Taylor Martinez is able to get it back in for another touchdown. All right, so last week he rushed for 127 yards and three touchdowns. Today, 157 yards on the ground for Martinez with two more scores. You know, that's just a huge day, and we've seen him make explosive plays. That's a pretty impressive drive as well. Just under four minutes and capping it off there with the touchdown run. You know, this offense, the way they're running it here, they're, they're growing, and there's going to have a little bit of uh, some inconsistencies along the way as you continue to grow. You've got you know, new center there. Things are changing up front there. you got to get Caputo in line, and I think he, I think he's going to be a good one. But I think the health of uh, Halu Jr. and able to run very well back there, and Burkhead a little change up, and Martinez. Those are three weapons just running the football that defenses are going to have to contend with. Gary, you'd have to say many more weapons this year for yes. this offense than they had a year ago. Yeah, you take Niles Paul and Brandon Kenny, those guys, throw Mike McNeil out there. Good receiving core as well. So a lot of good things happen on the offensive side. And Alec kicks it to the goal line. Look out. Changing direction, McCarty. Nice little change of direction there, but still didn't get to the 20 yard line. Anthony West with a good play defensively. You know, still going with Nate Enderley here, I'd, I'd, I'd suppose uh, for, for Idaho. I don't really see a reason why to bring him out, but Brian Reeder, who's a junior quarterback, could just, you know, get some more time, get some reps under his belt, uh, perhaps here in a situation, but he played, uh, played last week in that ball game. They won 45 to nothing, so Enderley is coming back into the ball game. 
late here in the third quarter. I think you're probably in a lot, a lot of times when you're down like 31 3 like the Vandals were at halftime you say let's go play the second half and let's pretend like it's 0 0 and if that's the case it's 7 7 here in the second half. So Enderly stays in. A little misdirection. He gives it on the end around and a gain of about five on first down. Good run coming around the corner there by Cama Bailey. Bailey there on the speed sweep, doing a good job. Kick, taking it forward. Good physical tackle. Boy, the timing of that play has to be perfect. Yeah, it is. You know, you get that uh, motion come around very quickly. Well, let's hope that uh, Ricky Tenars is okay. Of course, we've already outlined his injuries the last few years, and let's hope Tenars is okay as we take a look at the day for Enderley. Well, he's had some miscues here. This ball tipped in the air, and interception won by the defense, and that's exactly what happens. Those are some of the bad things that are happening to you, and when you get an interception here, return for a touchdown by Gomes. He's trying to put the ball on his receivers and credit the defense by Nebraska. They're playing very, very close to him, and, and this time he just throws one out there and that, that ball is just jumped by Tanara. So very good job in the secondary by Nebraska making some opportunities and playing good tight coverage. 14 of 27 on the day three interceptions 120 yards through the air for Enderley. And still down on the field is Ricky Tanars. Yeah, watch number three come in here and get his head down low underneath and then Got a little weight on him. Watch his left knee right there and leg. I th probably that's what the pressure is on. So, yeah, that's what they're working out on his left leg there. So they kind of got caught up under him as the pile just kind of jumped on top of him. Mm. Mm. Trying to help him up, but you can still see a lot of pain for Ricky Tenarsis. They help him off the field. Let's just hope it's something like a pulled hammy or something like that. that won't be anything crucial because remember last year he missed the second half of the season with a knee injury. A lot of weight coming down on, on in those piles and he kind of twisted the wrong way and that's usually what happens. Mm. I hope for the best for Ricky Tenars. Well after a gain of five second and five for the Vandals. Deontay Jackson is behind Enderley in the backfield. Jackson has rushed for 62 yards today. On play action, Enderley throws it to the outside. Pass is caught by Greenwood. He goes out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Antonio Bell was there defensively. Well, just a good job here. You got Nebraska's going to go run slant here and bring the stunt there with the linebacker, and Enderley steps into it. Does a good job of throwing the football. I haven't seen a whole lot of those good good spot throws here by uh, by Interly. This is Nebraska defense has been so good today. Second catch of the day for Greenwood. Another interception. The fourth of the day. This interception by Dennard. Now he's got ball skills. Coming over, I think, to the offensive side, you know, got some ball skills. A defensive cornerback playing real well. And again, close to the close to these receivers. And every throw that that uh, Nathan Enderley has made today, there's been a Nebraska receiver, a defender, very, very close. And this one, the ball that could have been caught by either player. And great job that time by Dennard making the play. That's four interceptions today from Enderley. Not kind of not a great homecoming back to Nebraska. No. And that's something. Yeah, because good player, good, good skills, and just not been his day. Martinez tried to get back to the line of scrimmage, and it was gang tackled. Grimes was the fine one that finally wrapped him up, and that's the end of the third quarter. So a third quarter, we'll watch some stops and starts by the Huskers. A couple of turnovers each for each team. 7-7 in that third quarter, but Nebraska with a commanding 38-10 lead as we head to the fourth quarter. Well, welcome back to Lincoln where the Huskers have a nice 38-10 comfortable lead 
over Idaho in this ball game and talking to Bo Pelini about his offensive group. Very, very pleased with his offensive line performance so far earlier this season. Had a chance to visit with him about some of the situations that they had last year in that offensive line and some of the concerns that he had coming into this year. We had a lot of issues, more than what people thought knew from the outside with what was going on offensively. And, and we didn't have all our all our weapons. And uh, now I, I think that uh, it's, it's a chance. We have depth. We have talent. I think uh, the understanding of the offense from the young guys is there. And I think we can be explosive. And well, he chose the right word, explosive, because yeah. that's what they've been here today. Yeah, and because you've got the offensive line, and you've got some depth there, and you take a look at the numbers here and what these guys are, you, you see Jamarcus Hardrick, you know, as a junior, giving him some play, and then Searles, a redshirt freshman, a left tackle also. So those two have played pretty well today, but the depth. Really the biggest change there is at center with Caputo. He's going to get the center, and that's really the only change from last year's starters. That's a good group to go with, good experience group. So they feel like this can be a group that's going to grow together and continue to improve, and then they'll have quality depth, which they really didn't have last year no. because they had so many injuries. I mean, they had the injury to Mike Smith out yeah. with a broken leg, the left tackle, and they just move along because of the depth that they have now. And they're very excited about that. And you'd have to say through the years, if Nebraska was known for any one thing, it was always their offensive line. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, you have <laughs> big steamrollers that they used to come off the line with, and I played against some of those guys in the National Football League, so I know all about the some of those guys that they used to come through here. Martinez keeps it himself and almost lost the handle able to pick it up as he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up a third and nine. Now here's a couple of record updates in case you're wondering as we look at Martinez running again here on this play and watch him almost lose it another turnover but able to hang on to it. Seven interceptions is the record by the Cornhusker defense in one game. So if you think four is a lot, they had seven against Kansas State in 1970. And Enderly, he has thrown for five interceptions in one game. That happened for him, unfortunately, in 2007 against Hawaii. Pass across the middle. And hanging on to his feet, Kinney, but never could really get back upfield. So pretty much kept going down the sideline and maybe even lost a yard to the 40 yard line. Never had a chance to really get going north or south. He's always coming across the field and never had a chance to turn left. Go turn left, turn left, turn left. <laughs> Just couldn't find a spot to get there. And Finally knocked him off his pegs. And you needed to be like a NASCAR driver. Just make a left turn yeah. somewhere. Turn left and good things will happen, right? So the punting unit comes out. Henry who averaged 43 yards per punt last week, punting for the first time here today. Excuse me, second punt of the day. The other one he pinned into the corner, remember? At the 10 yard line, this one. Probably inside the 15. It'll still be a good one inside the 15 yard line. Let's see where they mark it. It'll be marked at, oh, nope, at the 17 is where they'll mark this one. Henry, you figure, is going to be playing on Sundays. It's rare for anybody to play in the NFL as a dual threat as far as a kicker, a punter and a kicker. Well, the only thing about Henry is if you know if he's going to play at the next level, obviously as a kicker, he's a, he's got, got the tools to be able to do that. But you really you need to be able to kick off as well. And he hasn't been able to do that. They've always used a dual combination here for, yeah. for that. So that's a skill he's going to need to develop. And there may be a, a team that has a punter that can do kickoff duties that could draft him and just use his skills as a place kicker. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, as this action rolls on here in the fourth quarter, let's update things from Lawrence. Of course, the Jayhawks with an embarrassing loss last week to a 1-double-A opponent. How about this? Leading with 7.30 to go in the fourth quarter, 28-25. That's good news, really, for Nebraska fans because Turner Gill is the head coach of the Jayhawks. No doubt about it. And you got some things going their way this week. Last week had some turnovers. Did not play very well in any phase of the game. And I know that Turner Gill addressed all those things with his football team, getting a better output today. Put, could pull up a huge upset today uh, with this game against Georgia Tech. McCarty stays on his feet before West can wrap him up, but they're going to move the chains. This ball is marked up at the 30 or 27 yard line. Yeah, that game last week with Kansas, the only game that the Big 12 Conference, any team in the Big 12 Conference lost last week. So 11 and 1 over, over, the, over the stretch. That's the best ever first, uh, best ever week in the Big 12 Conference uh, against other opponents. Well, it's actually a little shy of the first down marker. And now we're going to have a timeout taken by Nebraska. 
I think Nebraska Timeout. thought that Nebraska. was a first down as well, and instead it's third and short, and they want to get the right personnel out on the field. So we'll take the timeout with them with 12, 23 remaining in the contest. Nebraska leading by 28. Boy, here in Nebraska, when they tailgate, I mean, they bring it all. This is an onion slicer. Hmm. Getting ready to make some. Or is that a potato? That's a potato. Oh, making some curly fries. There you go. Oh. Well, this Nebraska crowd kind of sitting on their hands a little bit here is not a whole lot has happened in the second half. It's third and short, though. Third and less than one. Remember what they did last time in this situation? They spread things out and they had five on five and they just let the running back go. Now it's going to be a little tighter because you're going to have a defender who's responsible for this receiver. He's walked in. Little change there. You see how he's doing it there? Anderley, he gives it up to Jackson. Still a good read by the back. It was a good read. He's able to get one. I'm a little surprised that they don't just go with a quarterback sneak with Enderley being as big as he is. Well, that means you'd have to move the big guys in front, and no, Jared Crick's not easy to move in no. either. It's Baker Steinkuhler, so inside you see that pressure, pressure there, and you know, that backside gap there. You just had to have that opening when everybody comes down. Good job by the back. So a fresh set of downs for the Vandals. Pitch back, and on the reverse, little razzle dazzle didn't fool anyone, especially didn't fool Jared Crick. Wow, what a play! Well, double reverse, pitch back to the quarterback. You've got to hold out the big guys up front to be able to have this much time to throw it. You're trying to razzle down from here, but watch old 94. He's not going to be fooled. He's going to run back there and keep going through, and there you go. I found me another one. It's lunchtime. A loss of 18, the second sack of the day for Crick. Enderley throws a quick out to the outside. Pass is caught by Armani Johnson. And a short gain. Amukamara with another stop today. And yeah, just putting yourself behind the chains though with those negative plays, and that's not not easy to overcome, even with an experienced quarterback like Enderley. So now it's third and 20 plus. So you you're, you're still got a ways to go here. Want to be smart with it here. You don't want to try to stick it in there and try to do something foolish because it could be a Another negative play. We've seen a couple of those today that are big plays for the Nebraska defense with touchdowns on the board. Idaho just three of ten on third down. Across the middle of the field, an easy pick here. Anthony West. That's the fifth interception of the day for the Huskers. Yeah, and that was probably the worst throw of the day by Nathan Enderley. And I think he must have had a miscommunication with his receiver that he expected him to be into the post. And there was no receiver there. So we'll take a look at it here from the end zone. We'll watch what Nate Enderley's looking for. He's probably expecting his receiver to break here, and he doesn't do so. So safety's back there, and there's one that got held up right there in coverage. That's just an easy catch there for the safety coming downhill. Daniel Hardy, the tight end, stopped his route, and I don't think that's what Enderley expected. So tying a career low for Enderley with five interceptions today. Cody Green now in at quarterback for the Huskers. Pitch out here to Paul. And he's able to get something out of nothing, maybe gained a yard out of all that. Yeah, that's that triple option opportunity there. You give it inside, you don't take that, you pull it out, you go around as a quarterback, or if that's not there, you pitch it. And we saw Taylor Martinez do this from pitching, but he's a little more speed, a little faster around the edge, and it worked a little quicker. How's Paul just back there on the backside, just stepping back and ready for the pitch? Actually, a gain of two, second and eight. Cody Green was outstanding last week, five of six through the air for 66 yards and a touchdown. Trying to draw the defense offside. Give here to Burkhead. He goes around the right side and able to pick up a couple of more. Aaron Grimes was there. Mayoa also there. Idaho still going to the football here, doing a good job defensively, trying to slow these guys down. And Cody Green getting in the ball game. And you know, last year he you know he came in and played, I thought, pretty well for Nebraska with the opportunities that he had as a, as a young player. And now he competed for the starting job with Zach Lee and also with Taylor Martinez this season. 
relegated now to the number two, the backup in, in his sophomore campaign. So he's still a pretty steady guy that I think that uh, if need be, they'd be able to put in the ball game here and get good production out of for the Huskers. The swing pass to Burkhead. He was trying to reach for that first down marker. Looks like he's going to be a little bit short. Shiloh Ko forced him out of bounds at the 12. That is a yard short of the first down marker. It looks like they may be going for it here. You see the throw and Burkhead turns up trying to get that first down and. Maybe a little bit short. Looks like they're going to bring in the jumbo heavy package here to try to get this first down. So a fourth down and one yard to go. This is the first time this year that Nebraska has tried a fourth down conversion. The give. Here's to Burkhead. No, I don't think he got it. Nope, he didn't. They're stopped on fourth down. It's an exceptional play on the defensive side of the ball. Mongo with a nice stop. Yeah, Mongo comes from the backside, jumps over the blocker, and makes that play in the backfield. Good job. So Idaho is still playing hard here today, even though they trailed 31 3 at the half. It's 38 10 with 8.56 remaining. So I'm headed to the game of the year with my new friend. Tailgating was great. But she had the worst seats, so I told her I'd buy all my tickets at TicketExpress.com. She tried to make it up to me. What happened? She got bogus tickets off Craigslist. Bad idea. She's Facebook. Deleted. I just scored the best club seats on the 50 from Ticket Express. See you in the club. Ticket Express. We've got the best seats. Period. Treat yourself. You're club worthy. <laughs> Well, Idaho with a nice defensive stand there to stop the Huskers on that fourth down play. We well, get a fourth down opportunity here and watch Manga come back from the backside, and there he goes, just tracks it down. That's great effort. Looks like front side, they'd had enough space there to allow him to get through, but Manga on the backside just tracks it down. So turns it back over to the offense. You know, Bo Pelini, I'm sure. You know, in a sense, for him, this is going to give him a chance to get on his team a little bit before next week's game at Washington, saying, guys, we just didn't finish. We weren't as consistent in the second half. So now we have a new quarterback for the Vandals. Brian Reeder is now under center. Reeder, a junior out of Prunedale, California. And the give is to Jackson. Stood up pretty much at the line, a gain of a couple. Josh Williams was in on the stop. Well, just getting a chance to get your other quarterback in the ball game, I think you need to do that. The Nate Enderly, you know, came back to Nebraska, obviously, was a kid who was recruited here, did not sign here, went on to play at Idaho in his career. And big 6'5 kid. I think there's still bright days ahead for him. I think he's got a future, and when he gets into conference play, he's going to be able to lead this team. This Nebraska football team is one of the better teams in the country, you know, rated, rated number six coming in this week. So, you know, I think he's going to hold his head high. Did not have a great day throwing the football. I had some bad things happen to him on the defensive side of the ball with some interceptions. So, overall, I think the Nate Enderley probably going to have better days ahead and just kind of needs to fold this one away and say, hey, you know, we'll move on from here. What was it that said you can't go home again? <laughs> Tough homecoming here for Nathan Enderley with five interceptions today. That ties a career low for him. He did that against Hawaii a couple of years ago. 2007. So now Brian Reeder after that first down pass caught there by Johnson. Reeder was four for nine last week for 88 yards in the Vandals win. Look out here. Down he goes. Big hit by Terrence Moore. Almost as if Terrence Moore comes through the offensive lines almost untouched. That's how quickly he got back there on Reeder. On the left side, it's kind of just a swim move up over the top, and boom, there he goes. Beat the right tackle. And right about now, Brian Reeder is saying, did I really have to play today? So that makes it after a loss of 13, second and 23. Reader this time given time to throw goes across the middle, but good coverage again by Anthony West and the pass incomplete. This has been a day that I think Nebraska's defense they've made some great plays overall, Dave, and in the pass game and the pass rush game. 
held down the running game here, I think, of Idaho to not allow them to get some consistency. So Carl Pliny's got to be pleased with, mm -hmm. with this group. You know, maybe not the most consistent effort overall in all phases, but the communication has been, been improved. They had some of those errors last week. And uh, they're still a, ball, a team that is still young. They're trying to grow some players in, in the positions. But uh, they've made strides today, and I think the secondary has really played very well. Another sack. The sixth sack of the day. Down goes Reeder at the four. Terrence Moore came rushing in. Yeah, it looks like Moore, maybe Pierre Allen also at the top of the screen. And Pierre's coming to get there on his first one there, and he's going to help with the. He's actually going to get the sack. Yeah, it is. Pierre Allen. Last week, one sack. This week, six. Well, you got a team that's trying to pass the football and trying to do some things. And, you know, when you can pin your ears back and really rush at them, that's not an easy thing for an offense to deal with. And Gary Carl Pellini told us yesterday, look, we don't try to do anything fancy. We just bull rush. We come at you in waves. And when the quarterback gets a little bit antsy and tries to get out of the pocket, that's when we sack them. Yeah, you got to get off those blocks, and they're strong enough to do that. They shed those blockers. and. Turnover on downs here, and there might be a chance to punch the ball in the end zone. Comes up just short. Robinson, about a half yard short. Gary Walker tripped him up. He thought he was in, but the nose of the ball wasn't across the goal line. Cody Green at quarterback there, and Dontrevious Robinson at tailback. Chance to punch the ball in the end zone here. Second and goal, about 10 inches to go. Robinson. Oh, this time hit behind the line. The ball is loose, and Idaho says they have it. Sia VE came in over the top and made a wonderful tackle, and then Robinson coughed it up. Well, interesting here. Take a look over the top, you know, just kind of meet the block. Whoa. Now, did that ball come out as he hit the ground? He hit the ground. The ball it may not be a fumble. So let's take a look and see where is the ball actually? Oh, it's yeah on the contact. Yeah, CV as you said, Dave, over the top. He contacted the football and it knocked out. So no question here. As he's going up, he loses the football. It's out. Gary Walker fell on it. Fourth turnover for Nebraska today. So even though they've had five interceptions, they've also turned it over four times themselves. Yeah, but the defense for Nebraska really, I think, has kind of been the story today. They've had a lot of good things happen for them today, and you know, we're going to see them roll out there again here. But uh, well, the defensive numbers today for the Black Shirts so much better. They do allow 10 points, but you know that touchdown was after an offensive turnover deep into their zone. I mean, look at the points there. It's allowed. It's not they'd like to have the six sacks. And what about touchdowns? You know, they got a couple of scores here. You got, you got a couple of touchdowns uh, off this defensive performance. Carl please has got to be happy about that. And adds to the adds to the mix here. You know, take those 14 points off the board. A little bit closer. 24-10 ball game. But it's 14 points of those two touchdowns defensively. Really is what give you a separation in any any game, any contest. You know, here in Nebraska, everything's going to be. Closely scrutinized, analyzed, and all of that by well the entire state, really, <laughs> and Husker fans throughout the nation. Yeah. And you know these coaches, they know that. I mean, they're, everything's going to be digested in a certain way. So, how is this going to be received in Husker Nation? I think it should be uh, you know received well because you're you're trying to get early in the season. I think a lot of coaches are like this. They want to see growth of their football team. They want to see growth in all areas. The inexperienced players get a chance to get some repetitions and. You want to be able to grow as a football team. So these are the points off the turnovers. That's a story here today for Idaho and Nebraska. 21 points for Nebraska and seven for um, for Idaho. So talking about how this will be received, Dave, I think it should be received very, very good. But there's still room room to improve. You need to cut down on your penalties. You need to cut down on the mistakes that you're making. You really have a dominant effort, and that's what you'd expect from a number six team in the country. Cam Bailey with the run, just to get out of the shadow of their own. End zone, Opalini. I'm going to take a word that he has used a couple of times. Sloppy. Yeah. I think here in the second half, sloppy would be the way to describe, especially the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, it may be described as sloppy, not just not hitting on all cylinders as they did early on in the ball game, and just made some huge plays. But you know, overall, as a team, it's a team concept and mm -hmm. how, how you do things. And sometimes the offense has to pick the defense up, and likewise, the defense picks the offense up sometimes. And that's how you win football games. 
Raider tucks and runs and slides and boy that could be close to a late hit. Terrence Moore came in and after Reader slid to a stop. A little bit of a flyby there. And it's enough for a first down for the Vandals. Ball now at the 13 yard line with 516 and the clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Change of direction. Bailey still on his feet and then lost the ball momentarily. Josh Williams stood his ground on the corner. We got all second team unit players here for Nebraska on the field and it cost fumble. Watch that Williams knocks it out and almost a good uh, good good fortune there for Nebraska. He's able to pull that ball in for Idaho and almost the seventh turnover for the Vandals and certainly when you're the underdog the one thing you can't lose is the turnover ratio and they have today six turnovers for the Vandals four for the Huskers pass it was on target but right through the hands the coverage though is absolutely stunning for the Huskers today they are right there with them stride for stride Osborne with the nice defensive play there yeah, one of the corners or defensive backs that they they like a lot have a chance to get some players in the game or get some experience Terrell also there so now this brings up third and nine and a whistle will stop play and defensive timeout by Nebraska. Yeah. Timeout taken just snap. before the snap. Timeout, Time Nebraska. Nebraska. Second timeout used by Nebraska here in the second half. One of the things that has always been strong for the Huskers is an unbelievable walk on program. And that tradition certainly continues here under Bo Pelini. You look at Austin Cassidy, a walk on. Walked on in 2007. He holds on the field goals. He is also a backup safety. He's played in all 14 games last year and had eight tackles. Yeah, another player also, Mike Caputo, the number 58, the, the starting center, was a walk-on originally. And they said, hey, he, he's pretty darn good. We get him on scholarship pretty quick. So they welcome the walk-ons here in Nebraska. It's been a great tradition. It's been a great fertile opportunity for them to great to develop young players and get them on the scholarship and, and get them here playing football for them. Cassidy. Uh, a quarterback in high school but moves to the defensive side of the ball yeah. here at Nebraska. Well, you look at the tough day for Nathan Enderley today. The guy from North Platte coming home to Nebraska and it's been a tough one. Yeah, Five the, interceptions. Yeah the defense has been kind of kind of picky on him and it's just kind of taking the ball away and he's thrown the ball early in the game. I thought he threw it well but as the defense just kind of locked down on the receivers. They just made play on the balls and Tanar's here to take this one back to the house. So good job by the secondary of Nebraska and really made it tough on Nathan Enderley kind of in a short homecoming here from Nebraska and coming and having a chance to play here in Memorial Stadium for the first time as a, as a collegiate. So but hasn't the coverage Gary been just stunning today really they've been stride for stride with every receiver of the Vandals. There wasn't any receiver that I've seen all day long with Idaho running wide open or free or any miscommunication or poor poorly uh, played in the secondary. I think they've all been very well covered. Enderley was joking around earlier this week said well the entire town of North Platts trying to come to Memorial Stadium trying to get tickets. He said I have a feeling that they're all going to be cheering for Nebraska except for maybe my folks. <laughs> You'd have some of that I think <laughs> some of the guys that'd be, uh, be hoping for him and that's one of the things about about sports and college sports in particular and you got those divided households and you got those divided loyalties but you always want to have your your own your kids from your hometown you want them all to do well. I dare say Enderley will not see the type of coverage Nebraska's had here today again this season maybe Boise State but I can't see anybody else on their schedule that's going to have this kind of coverage. And I think the, I think the play in the secondary the corner so how well they're able to stay close and tight to these receivers and just compete and challenge them and make plays on the football that was a difference today. Pass caught by Eric Greenwood a gain of eight about this final Kansas beating and upsetting 
15th ranked Georgia Tech 28 25. What a turnaround for the Jayhawks. Well, Turner Gill, I tell you, he must have done a lot of good coaching this week because he got his players ready to play. I watched a little of it at halftime in there on the monitor, and uh, they were playing hard. They punched one in the end zone. So I, I was happy for that bunch to get a win and really didn't have a good outing the first week of the weekend of the season for the Jayhawks. But hey, maybe they're back on track. But coming into that game, who would have thought they could pull off that upset? today in Lawrence. I mean to do that is absolutely amazing and erases what happens last week. Brent. Second teamers and third teamers in but uh, he went off earlier with cramps. I think it looked a lot worse than it really was but just cramps for him. He's fine on the sideline. Yeah, they're saying that about Tanaris is who he's yeah. talking about. Mike came up a little bit late there, but he was talking about Tanaris, and that's good news that it's just cramps for him. Yeah, we saw him underneath the pile and getting carried off the field and really wasn't uh, wasn't feeling very well, but hopefully they get some fluid in if that's just cramps and, and get to uh, getting back going. Certainly wouldn't want to miss him out of that, that secondary because he played very, very well today. Huge interception and a, and a return for a touchdown. 47-yard return for a touchdown. And they made it 31 to nothing at that point. Since then, it's been a little bit more of the Vandals story. And part of that, also some turnovers by Nebraska. Second and ten, ball thrown across the middle and caught. Nice catch across the middle by Jackson. And he takes it down to the 34. It's like Jackson's shaking up a little bit after the catch. Little seam route there, just throwing it back behind the linebackers. And Reader across the middle into coverage, and it's going to be face guarding here. Thorell with the little face guard action is going to be whistled for a penalty. And that just kind of runs right through the receiver, and you can't do that. You got to make a play on the football and come back. Otherwise, it is pass interference. There's nothing pass else the official can call. Defense, number 23, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. The 10th penalty of the day against the Huskers. Just watching the back of the defender here. He's never, <laughs> never gets turned around. That's an easy call for the back judge. So after the penalty marks the ball at the 19. Reader into the end zone touchdown. Armani Johnson. Pretty good throw. He beat the freshman Siante Evans. It's good job here in throwing the football by Reader. You know just throws that ball out there and. A little outside move and coming back down the field and throws it deep. He's got the cornerback beaten and just over the top of him. So Armani Johnson has scored a touchdown last week. It's another one here. Boy, Brian Reeder has come in off the bench as he is the relief pitcher for the Vandals, doing a good job substituting for Enderley. Of course, not facing maybe the same type of defense that Enderley saw as the point after is tacked on by Farquhar. So it's 38 17 now. Long drive too. Yeah drive that started what back at the two two yard line 98 yards on that drive guys so wow in three minutes and 48 seconds. You look at the difference 341 yards rushing today for Nebraska. They lead overall but again they've allowed almost 300 yards of offense to an opponent. Yeah. Ten plays. 98 yards. This is a good throw here by Reader. Steps in his throw. Good protection. This drive helped a little bit by a couple of penalties. But that's a perfect throw. <laughs> Siante Evans a true freshman one of three true freshmen. They're suiting up this year for the Huskers. So back to the drawing board a little bit for Carl Pelini on the defensive side of the ball. He's not going to be happy. I mean, one of the drives you can accuse, one of the touchdowns, I should say, for the Vandals, because it was Idaho taking over deep in the Nebraska end, but this one, a 98 yard drive, even though it's backups and third yeah. stringers and stuff like that playing still. You got to slow them down, shut them down. Here's the onside kick opportunity. And good hands 
for P.J. Smith. So the hands team was in there and he's able to cover it at the 41 yard line. Well, Idaho credit them. They're not uh, not shutting down. They did a good job taking that ball and all the way down the field. 98 yards. That's a long drive. Mm -hmm. Some good things happened for him on that drive and something Rob Aiky can take and build on and Boy, you can imagine help, help that the de best, decombobulation. You know, in this day and age, <laughs> with all the message boards out there, can you imagine what Husker Nation is saying right now? Oh, oh Panic City! Yeah, it's late in the game, and yeah, as you right. said, Dave, you know, you don't have your, your normal players in there that are going to be there in conference play. You probably pretty much got the game in hand. Going to get your get your win here, 500th in Lincoln. AJ Jones on the carry. He's able to gain six on first down. Taylor Martinez, another good day for him. As Martinez rushed for 157 yards and two touchdowns. Well, the more that I see of Taylor Martinez, the more I am impressed. Yeah. You know, he just has poise, confidence, and ability to run this offense. He stays healthy and just continues to grow as a quarterback. And I think it's going to be a, a really strong offense here for Nebraska. AJ Jones close to a first down. C of E, e with a stop there. And they give him enough progress to gain the first down at the 31. Cody Green takes the snap. Good rush up the middle for A.J. Jones. One of the guys who. Had a little big input here on this program is and Dominican Sue and he's made a little commitment here to the Husker program a couple million dollars worth of commitment. And all these players have iPads in their lockers and he's going to do a big improvement in the locker room as well. So Dominican Sue giving back and he gets his first NFL start this weekend. I know Husker fans are going to be wanting to watch him mm -hmm. playing for those Lions. Didn't have a iPad my locker. <laughs> Didn't have iPads <laughs> when you played. <laughs> Did they have computers back then? They were just starting. Oh, okay. Just starting, yeah. Yeah. 123 iPads plus he donated two million dollars right. to the weight room. It'll become known as the Indomitian Sioux weight room here at Nebraska. There's some improvements in there, got some change gonna happen, so I think it's all positive and good to see Indomitian Sioux uh, you know looking back at his program and, and helping out and still being involved. Lester Ward now in there, dotting the eye. Cody Green keeps it and is hauled down at the 22 yard line. And that's the last play of the game. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers go to 2 0 on the year. Bo Pelini will go back to the drawing board. A lot of things you have to like about what he saw today, but a few things that you don't like as they get ready for Washington. Yeah, they'll have to clean up some things there, no doubt about that. You want to be consistent. But I think as you get to all your players in there, you're going to play a full ball game with all your starters. You're going to see a different different level of play. But I think overall the offense really played very well today. Obviously, Taylor Martinez continued his development as a quarterback. Defense, huge plays, though, with the turnovers. So Nebraska wins this one by the final score of 38-17. We'll be back to wrap it up from Lincoln in just a moment. As the Cornhuskers go back through the tunnel to the locker room, they know they're 2 0 on the year, a 38 17 win today over the Vandals of Idaho. With Gary Reasons, I'm Dave Armstrong. And again, good news, bad news today for Nebraska. Yeah, a lot of good news. I think if you yeah. start with Taylor Martinez and really what he did offensively as a quarterback, just a young freshman in his second, second ball game, but I think he did superbly well. Still showing that he has the tools for the run game. Huge run here early in the ball game, just ran away from the defense. That zone replay is going to be dangerous for teams this year for Nebraska as they have. Uh, have different opponents so but he did try to make some little bit of struggles here this time trying to throw under duress and the defense comes up with an interception so he's had some growing pains there offensively but overall the defense offensively he had enough 
good plays to his credit. He really outshined anything. Portland. And that last play, both a good play, a bad play, and then back to a good play again. But it's all part of a learning curve for Taylor Martinez. Yeah, he's got to get better in a few different areas. He's got to take care of the football, most importantly. Got to understand what you need to do with it. Get rid of the football. Got to have that clock go off. He did have that one sack in the ball game where he had a backside blitz, and he really didn't understand where that came from. It caused a fumble and, turn and a turnover. So some things happened poorly for him, but I still think he was growing, and I see a bright future for him. All right, now on defense, Gary, I, I mean, I think you got to take it as a positive because they created so many turnovers. They had five interceptions on the day today. Now, they did give up the long touchdown or long drive. drive in the last quarter, but that was with a lot of third stringers in there. I think overall the defense played pretty well. And they played well, and they played well early. That was the most important thing. And the turnovers, I think, were the big difference. Nathan Enderley, the quarterback for Idaho, really didn't have a very carefree day. He had a lot of pressure, and he had a lot of close coverage, I think, by the secondary for the Huskers. They did a good job in turnovers. Those were the key. A couple of touchdowns by the defense. Interceptions return for scores. Gomes gets this one here to get it back in the end zone. And then you're going to have Tavares, Tenaris here take one. This is a great break on the football and take it back for a score. So anytime you can determine, get a, get a score from the defense, it's a huge turnover for you, a huge opportunity for you to put points on the board. It's a great break for your football team. So when they pick Enderley five times in this game here today, Boy, Nebraska has to be happy about that. All right, it's one thing to say what we think about what happened on the field today for Nebraska, but it's a whole other thing to hear it from the head coach. Bo Pelini is standing by with Brent Stover. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Overall, game two, you get the win. How do you feel? Uh, I didn't like the second half. I mean, I thought we played a good first half. The second half, that was sloppy, careless, undisciplined football. I'm not happy with it. But What are maybe numbers one and number two things that you want to get done this week in practice? Fix ourselves. So that's all we got to do. We put up a lot of yards and, and uh, we put the ball on the ground and uh, we were we played careless and and obviously the penalties hurt us bad. So you know we just fix ourselves. We'll be fine. Are there one or two players on the defense though that you were pleased with? Obviously you got I six turnovers and five picks. Defensively we played well. We played very well defensively. You know I mean that last drive you can throw that out and then uh, you know we had our backups and in, in there. But uh, defensively we played well. Well congratulations on the victory. Appreciate the Thank time. You. So the Huskers go to 2 and 0 on the year with a final score once again from Lincoln, Nebraska 38, Idaho 17. Today's Nebraska Idaho game, an exclusive presentation of FSN Pay-Per-View. Our next Pay-Per-View telecast comes your way week 4. Huskers take on South Dakota State. Check your local listings for game time information. For producer Tim Paps, director Tom Williamson, Brent Stover and Gary Reasons, I'm Dave Armstrong saying good afternoon from Lincoln, Nebraska.